So what is PIDS? For over 40 years, the Philippine Institute for Development Studies or PIDS has been the country's foremost socio-economic think tank. It conducts rigorous and objective policy research and analyses that help the government in crafting relevant policies, plans, and programs in support of the country's long-term vision and development goals. PIDS pursues its mandate through three basic programs research, dissemination, and outreach. Through its research program, PIDS identifies and prioritizes studies, develops proposals, and conducts research on priority areas. The results of these studies are then disseminated through different platforms, publications, online resources, PIDS Corner Seminars and the Development Policy Research Month or DPRM held every September. To shed light on key policy issues, the advice and expertise of the Institute's research fellows are also sought by policymakers, government agencies, private sector, and civil society. Since 1977, PIDS has completed numerous policy studies on a wide range of development topics. This brand of service has then translated to policies and programs that have improved the lives of every Filipino. Philippine Institute for Development Studies Service Through Policy Research In need of references for your research? Do you want a digital library that you can access for free anytime and anywhere? You don't have to look far. Serpkey is here for you. Serpkey is an online database of socioeconomic materials produced by the Philippine Institute for Development Studies. Government agencies, research and academic institutions, and international organizations based in the Philippines. It is the country's first online repository of socioeconomic information. Created for policymakers and development practitioners, researchers, educators, and students. To access SERPI, just visit the PIDS website and click the SERPI widget or type serp-p.pids.gov.ph. SERPI has a wide variety of materials such as journal articles, books, research papers, working papers, policy notes, audiovisual materials, and more. As of 2021, SERPI has more than 50 partner institutions contributing knowledge resources to the database. SERPI provides a comprehensive coverage of references encompassing 22 research themes, labor and education, gender and development, poverty, technology and innovation, trade and industry, and many more. You can search by keyword or author, publication type, research theme, or year published. Serpy has more than 7,000 publications and audiovisual materials that you can access and download for free. What are you waiting for? Visit Serpy now! Socioeconomic Research Portal for the Philippines, Innovating Knowledge Exchange and Policy Research. Dapat po munang alamin or matukoy ang pangunahing problema ng bansa upang mapagtuunan ng pansin at mabigyan ng solusyon. We should have a specific goals, um, do research, and make a policy that is fair for everyone. Walang problema sa pulisiya. Iayos lang ang pagpapatupad. Bago patubas ang batas, pag-aralan muna gusto ng government. Two things, clarity and execution. Both, you need the communication, and monitoring, monitoring, monitoring. As simple as that. Mandato ng Philippine Institute for Development Studies, o PIDS, na gumawa ng mga pag-aaral at pananaliksik ng mga pulisiya at programa ng pamalaan at magbigay ng rekomendasyon sa mga mambabatas sa pagbabalangkas ng mga pulisiyang makakatulong sa ating bansa. 
sinusulong ng aming ahensya ang evidence-based policy making ipang bigyan din ng kalagahan ng polisiya na batay sa datos at policy research na sumusuri sa tunay na kalagayan ng ating mga komunidad. Napakahalaga ng policy research, lalo na sa mga panahong dumadaan sa krisis ang ating bansa. Kapag polisiya ay pinag-aralan, susulong ang bayan! So what is PIDS? For over 40 years, the Philippine Institute for Development Studies or PIDS has been the country's foremost socio-economic think tank. It conducts rigorous and objective policy research and analyses that help the government in crafting relevant policies, plans, and programs in support of the country's long-term vision and development goals. PIDS pursues its mandate through three basic programs research, dissemination, and outreach. Through its research program, PIDS identifies and prioritizes studies, develops proposals, and conducts research on priority areas. The results of these studies are then disseminated through different platforms, publications, online resources, PIDS Corner Seminars and the Development Policy Research Month or DPRM held every September. To shed light on key policy issues, the advice and expertise of the Institute's research fellows are also sought by policymakers, government agencies, private sector, and civil society. Since 1977, PIDS has completed numerous policy studies on a wide range of development topics. This brand of service has then translated to policies and programs that have improved the lives of every Filipino. Philippine Institute for Development Studies Service Through Policy Research In need of references for your research? Do you want a digital library that you can access for free anytime and anywhere? You don't have to look far. Serpy is here for you. Serpy is an online database of socioeconomic materials produced by the Philippine Institute for Development Studies. Government agencies, research and academic institutions, and international organizations based in the Philippines. It is the country's first online repository of socioeconomic information. Created for policymakers and development practitioners, researchers, educators, and students. To access SERPI, just visit the PIDS website and click the SERPI widget or type serp-p.pids.gov.ph. SERPI has a wide variety of materials such as journal articles, books, research papers, working papers, policy notes, audiovisual materials, and more. As of 2021, SERPI has more than 50 partner institutions contributing knowledge resources to the database. SERPI provides a comprehensive coverage of references encompassing 22 research themes, labor and education, gender and development, poverty, technology and innovation, trade and industry, and many more. You can search by keyword or author, publication type, research theme, or year published. SERPI has more than 7,000 publications and audiovisual materials that you can access and download for free. What are you waiting for? Visit SERPI now! Socioeconomic Research Portal for the Philippines, Innovating Knowledge Exchange and Policy Research. Dapat po munang alamin or matukoy ang pangunahing problema ng bansa upang mapagtuunan ng pansin at mabigyan ng solusyon. We should have a specific goals, um, do research, and make a policy that is fair for everyone. Walang problema sa polisiya. Iayos lang ang pagpapatupad. 
Bago patubas ang batas, pag-aralan muna gusto ng government. Two things, clarity and execution. Both, you need the communication and monitoring, monitoring, monitoring. As simple as that. Mandato ng Philippine Institute for Development Studies o PIDS na gumawa ng mga pag-aaral at pananaliksik ng mga pulisiya at programa ng pamalaan at magbigay ng rekomendasyon sa mga mambabatas sa pagbabalangkas ng mga pulisiya ang makakatulong sa ating bansa. Sinusulong ng aming ahensya ang evidence-based policy making upang bigyan din ng kalaghan ng pulisiya na batay sa datos at policy research na sumusuri sa tunay na kalagayan ng ating mga komunidad. Napakahalaga ng policy research, lalo na sa mga panahong dumadaan sa krisis ang ating bansa. Kapag pulisiya ay pinag-aralan, susulong ang bayan! Hi, Ma'am Shia. Quickly checking. Gwen, can you hear me? Yes. Ah, okay. I thought my mic is not working. Thank you. Welcome to the PIDS webinar series. Before we start the webinar, we would like to give you a few reminders. For attendees, your microphone is muted upon entry. In case you have a question, the moderator will read it during the open forum. For those attending via Cisco WebEx, use the chat box located at the lower part of the screen. Click the chat icon, type your name and affiliation, and your question, and send to all panelists. You may send your questions while the presentation is in progress. The moderator will read them during the open forum. For Facebook viewers, at least two questions from the comment section will be read by the moderator during the open forum. We will moderate all questions to ensure that they are relevant to the scope of the presentation. Thank you for joining us and we look forward to your active participation. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. This is the PIDS webinar series where we feature PIDS policy studies and the insights of government policymakers and program implementers, scholars, civil society actors, and private sector and industry stakeholders. With this webinar series, which we started in 2020, we hope to provide an accessible venue for evidence-based discussion of current and emerging development issues. I am Sheila C.R. and I will be your moderator. Respect and care for our senior citizens is paramount in the Filipino culture. 
We consider our seniors important members of our society, a source of knowledge and wisdom, a link to the past, and a source of guidance for a stronger future. There is a saying that goes, a society is measured by how it cares for its elderly citizens. In today's webinar, we will talk about our senior citizens and how we can promote their well-being through more responsive and equitable public policies and programs. A reference point in our discussion is a government program being implemented by the Department of Social, and well Social Welfare and Development, specifically for needy senior citizens. To officially open our virtual event and give us more information about today's topic, I now give the floor to our president of PIDS, Dr. Aniceto Arbeta Jr. Sir? Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, let me begin by acknowledging the presence of the following. From the government, we have Department of Social Welfare and Development Assistant Secretary Jocelyn Niwani and OIC Assistant Bureau Director Hannah Giray uh, Carcido. From Department of uh, Interior and Local Government, Assistant Secretary Esther Aldana. Uh, Government Service Insurance System Senior Vice President uh, Raquel uh, de Guzman Buen. Salida, uh, Social Security System Vice President for Management Services and Planning uh, Division, Leonora Cinco, Vice President for Actuarial Services Division, Pilby Oribello, and Assistant Vice President Carmen Soriano. House of Representative Congressional Policy and Budget Research Department, Executive Director Novel Bangsal, uh, Senate Economic Planning Office, Executive Director Merwin Salazar. Department of Social uh, Department of Science and Technology, Food and Nutrition Research Institute Directors and Scientist Emilda Agdipa. Uh, from PIDS, we have our Board of Trustees member, Dr. Gail Gertianto. From the private sector, we have uh, CPRM Consultants Incorporated Director Christine Racho. From the academy, let me acknowledge the following: Northern uh, Iloilo Polytechnic State College Batad Campus Associate Director Eva Montero. From CSOs, NGOs, and INGOs, we have uh, World Bank Social Protection Specialist Ruth Rodriguez, United Nations Development Program, uh, Philippine Deputy Resident Representative Edwin Carey, Asian Development Bank Gender and Development Consultant Claire Lockson, National Labor Union Lakas Mangagawa Labor Center President uh, David Diwa, Unang Hakbang Foundation Incorporated President Oli Lucas, Differently Abled Women Network President Milagros Makiling, Federation of Senior Citizen Associations of the Philippine Secretary General Oscar Rica Flanca, and Masaganang Sakhaning uh, Inc Incorporated Director Daniel Agustin. Let me acknowledge our friends from the media. And finally, let me also greet our friends, our colleagues from government and academe, civil society, media, private sector, as well as those who are watching to. PIDS and SERPI Facebook pages. Good afternoon and welcome to our uh, webinar. Today, we give the spotlight to our senior citizens. We hope to find ways to promote uh, their well being through this uh, webinar better. Recently, the House of Representatives passed House Bill uh, 10568, which would amend Republic Act 9994 or the Expanded Senior Citizens Act of 2010. Under this bill, senior citizens are exempted from paying the value-added tax and are granted a higher discount of 10% from the previous 5% under electricity and water bills. The House Special Committee on Senior, senior Citizens also passed the measure mandating all local government units to set aside at least 1% of their total budget for programs, projects, and activities exclusive for senior citizens. In addition, the panel approved several national bills that would establish nursing homes or complexes in every province, city, or municipality. Indeed, these measures imply that the government's, of the government's commitment to promote the welfare of the elderly in our country. Our senior citizens have spent their early years serving the economy and uh, society. Now that they are old and need government help, it's critical to provide them with care and support. One type of support, of support is pension. Since 2011, through the Department of Social Welfare and 
development. Uh, the government has been implementing the social pension for indigent senior citizens or SOCPEN. This program seeks to improve the conditions of indigent senior citizens by augmenting their daily subsistence and medical needs, reduce the incidence of hunger, and protect them from neglect, abuse, and deprivation, and natural and man-made disasters. Featured in today's webinar is the PID study SOCPEN Beyond 10, a process evaluation of this WD social pension program for the indigent senior citizen amid the COVID-19 pandemic, authored by PIDS Senior Research Fellow Ram Jose Ramon Albert, uh, consultant Jennifer Monhi, and PIDS Research Analyst uh, Maika Munoz. These studies investigate, investigated the SOCPEN's design and implementation processes, especially in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic. It also looked into the experience of the DSWD with the social amelioration program, which included cash transfers to SOCPEN beneficiaries and other vulnerable populations. The study also provided recommendations to improve program implementation. To enrich our discussion, we have invited as discussant DSWD's Program Management Bureau, OIC Assistant Bureau Director uh, Marcel Deloria, uh, National Commission on Senior Citizens Chairperson and Chief Executive Officer Attorney Franklin Quijano, and, and Coalition of Services of the Elderly Project Coordinator, Mrs. Mr. Dennis Destacamento. Uh, Thank you uh, for accepting our invitation. It is our honor to have you uh, at this event and hear your insights on the topic. I encourage all the participants to stay until the end of the webinar and actively participate in the open forum. Thank you. And I now give back the virtual floor to the moderator. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Urbeta. So at this point, I now invite all of you to pay attention to our uh, featured presentation uh, for this webinar, which as uh, mentioned by Dr. Urbeta is the study on DSWD's uh, social uh, pension or SOCPEN program authored and this study um, was authored by Dr. Uh, Jose Ramon Albert, Ms. Jennifer Monje, and uh, Ms. Uh, Mika Munoz. The presentation will be delivered by Dr. Albert, who is a senior research fellow at PIDS. He was a former Secretary General of the defunct National Statistical Coordination Board, which was consolidated with other statistics offices into the Philippine Statistics Authority, or PSA. Dr. Albert is also a member of various bodies and expert groups on statistics and related matters, including the United Nations Global Pulse Data Privacy Advisory Group and the Philippine Commission on Higher Education's Technical Committee on Statistics. Dr. Albert's educational qualifications include a bachelor's degree in applied math from the De La Salle University and a master's degree in a PhD in statistics from the State University of New York. His main research interests are on poverty, social protection, innovation, education, big data, data mining, and information and communication technologies. I now give you Dr. Jose Ramon Albert for his presentation. Thank you, Sheila. Uh, good afternoon. As was mentioned, this study is joint work with uh, Ms. Jennifer Monje, uh, Associate Professor at uh, Pamantasa ng Lunsod ng Maynila, and also my research assistant, Ms. Mika Munoz. We also have had some help from Norlisa Nordan and Aya Rasuman in uh, doing field and digital interviews. It has been more than 10 years since DSWD Social Pension uh, Program, known as SOCPEN, commenced in 2011, with the program growing considerably in terms of budgets and total beneficiaries, becoming the second largest social protection program only next to Pantawid. With some ongoing legislative initiatives to double the benefits of social pensioners, it is crucial to conduct a process interview of the SOCPEN. The talk is structured as follows. First, we give a brief background of the SOCPEN, followed by a short review of related literature. We then discuss a, an overview of the SOCPEN design and present the main empirical findings obtained from DSWD documents on the SOCPEN. 
interviews with 33 program implementers and 28 senior citizens, including beneficiaries and non-beneficiaries, as well as the analysis of the 2020 Annual Poverty Indicator Survey conducted by the Philippine Statistics Authority, or PSA. We close with a summary and a discussion of policy implications and recommendations. To start with, the expanded Senior Citizens Act of 2010, or RA uh, 9994, established the Social Pension for Indigent Senior Citizens, or SPISC, also referred to as SOCPEN for short, and gave the Department of Social Welfare and Develop Development, or DSWD, the responsibility for implementing the program. The objective of the SOCPEN is to provide indigent senior citizens cash to augment their daily allowance on food and medicines. The program provides a monthly stipend of 500 pesos to qualified beneficiaries. The SOCPEN payouts were then carried out quarterly with the elderly beneficiaries con collecting their cash assistance from their respective barangays. These days, the payouts are done every semester. At program onset, the DSWD sought to uh, assist 1.2 million indigent senior citizens who were identified in listahanan on a uh, 8.7 billion budget allocation. Insufficient funds, however, had prompted the department to target only around 140,000 seniors aged 77 or over. The SOCPEN budget allocation has since then increased exponentially to about 23.4 billion pesos in 2021 for a physical target of close to 4 million senior citizens for 2021, nearly two-fifths, 37.8% of seniors in the country. The monthly cash assistance has remained at 500 pesos month, uh, since 2011, although SOCPEN beneficiaries received extra help in recent years from the unconditional cash transfer of the train law and the social amelioration program last year. As I mentioned earlier, there's also pending legislation in both the House and the Senate to double the cash grants received by social pensioners. As pointed out in a World Bank study, the introduction of SOCPEN has practically doubled the reach of old age pension in the Philippines. The coverage rate for senior citizens from SSS and GSIS is around 20 to 25 percent. But with SOCPEN, Coverage has become around 40% as of 2016 and over 60% in 2020. This study, which we are now presenting, involved a process evaluation of SOCPEN, which sought to review the rationale, the design, and delivery of the program. In the Philippines, social protection revolves around managing situations that adversely affect the well-being of the poor, and various marginalized sectors, including the elderly. Since 2007, the government has adopted a definition of social protection consistent with definitions of international organizations that suggest that social protection can be viewed as having protective, preventative, promotive, and transformative functions. From 2009 to 2017, the country's public expenditure on social protection has grown, averaging at 0.9% of GDP or 5.9% of government expenditure. The bulk of the social protection program has been on social assistance programs including Pantawid and SOCPEN. The increased public investments and improved policies in social protection in the past decade have been paying off with the number and proportion of Filipinos deprived of social services dropping as suggested by trends in various indicators for monitoring the SDGs. What baffles me, however, is why the global SDG indicators still puts a coverage of 20.5% for old age pension unless this only um, pertains to SSS and GSIS. 
The figures, however, in other ASEAN member states, including Thailand and Malaysia, and uh, Singapore and Brunei, cover both their contributory pensions like SSS and GSIS, as well as our, their non-contributory pensions like SOCPEN. Implemented by DSWD, SOCPEN seeks to improve the living conditions of eligible indigent senior citizens. The theory of change assumes that when inputs such as budgets, monitoring and evaluation mechanisms, and key players are utilized well, they lead to intermediate outcomes such as efficient distribution of the cash assistance and relief for, for the elderly from the deprivations of minimum basic needs. The program is successful if intermediate outcomes become final outcomes, such as the indigent elderly becoming empowered to attain decent living conditions, the elderly being enabled to invest in their human capital, and inequalities reduced in the country. For any program, it is vital to have an operations manual, which SOCPEN only finalized June of last year. The SOCPEN operations manual describes the program objectives, logical frame, as well as business processes, but the current draft is quite terse and can be improved considerably by including a section on grievances and documenting governance structures and institutional arrangements, including the roles and responsibilities required for exacting accountability. As pointed out in both the OM, the Operations Manual, and the World Bank study that I mentioned earlier, the DSWD implements the SOCPEN through various units in the, in the central office, plus the field offices, and with the cooperation of local government units through the Office of Senior Citizen Affairs, or OSCA, at the city and municipal levels. Transfer of some of the big-ticket DSWD programs to the National Commission on the Senior Citizens, or NCSC, including the SOCPEN, is currently underway. As was pointed out earlier, the initial master list of possible SOCPEN beneficiaries was first sourced from Lista Hanan. But since 2014, OSCA has taken over the targeting system. Seniors applying for SOCPEN submit to OSCA a, uh, uh, or the city or municipal uh, uh, SDE, the Social Welfare and Development Office, a birth certificate or other valid government ID that contains the senior's photo and date of birth. They're made to fill out an application form and provide a certificate of indigency from the barangay where the senior citizen resides. These documentary requir requirements can be personally given to the OSCA or city or municipal uh, social welfare development office or through their designated representative. The OSCA and the CMSD, MSWDO then assess the eligibility of the program applicants using age, health, and economic status as criteria. If the applicant is receiving pensions from GSIS, SSS, PVAO, the AFP, MBAI, or other insurance companies, or is reg or, uh, obtaining regular income or regular support from family, then the applicant is deemed ineligible. Program applicants are also evaluated on their health, whether they are frail, sickly, or disabled. Although the Local Government Code of 1991 devolved administra administration of social services to LGUs, RA9996 still gave DSWD the mandate to implement SOCPEN. The department, however, is jointly implementing SOCPEN with the LGUs. The program has had many changes over the years. From 2011 to 2013, SOCPEN used Listahanan to identify potential beneficiaries, but since Listahanan has imperfections in its poverty targeting and the database can get easily outdated given poverty dynamics, the DSWD allowed, even as early as program inception, for the acceptance of walk-in applicants when an elderly indigent is not in the Listahanan. Furthermore, in 2014, the definition of a social pensioner was relaxed without regard for the elderly's poverty status in the Listahanan. 
Throughout the, its existence, SOCPEN's operations have been funded by the GAA as part of the social protection programs implemented by DSWD. Only seniors age 77 and above were uh, targeted for SOCPEN up to 2014. Then in 2015, the minimum age of targeted beneficiaries was reduced to 65 and further down to 60 starting 2016 with the corresponding increased coverage and budgets. In 2018, DSWD implement a ma implemented a massive validation process. And in the first three years of social pensions existence, physical targets were exceeded. But starting after 2014, the number of actually served have fallen short of targets except in 2018. The biggest gap between the targets and actual serve was in 2019, largely, as I mentioned, on account of this validation process that was started in 2018 and which continued up to 2020. Field office staff did a house-to-house -house visit to validate if the beneficiaries are truly eligible to the program, making use of a beneficiary update form. Once the data from the form are encoded into the social pension information system, they are then consolidated and uploaded to the central office's information system with a compiled data process and subjected to cross-matching with GSIS and PVAO databases. And a clean master list is then sent to the uh, field offices for the payouts. The validation led, however, to delays in payouts across the country, resulting in gaps between the targets and the actual served at over 100,000 in 2019 for Eastern Visayas, for BARM, for Metro Manila, and for Calabarzon, for, and gave a national aggregate of 832,978. Last year, uh, uh, DSWD was authorized to download programs to LGUs under the Bayanihan app, which expedited the release of funds in 2020, but uh, pro problems persisted in validation in Eastern Visayas and BARM, that, that, and uh, that led to having these regions continue to have gaps between targets and actual served. With the lapse of the Bayanian Act, downloading of funds to LGUs had to be discontinued in 2021, except for LGUs with good track records. As of April 2021, gaps were at over 200,000 in Metro Manila, Calabarzon, Eastern Visayas, as well as Soxargen. No, no, no cash distribution has been made in BARM as of April 2021, starting in 2020. As I had mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, our review of the design and implementation of SOCPEN involved also the collection and analysis of new primary data consisting of key informant interviews and focus group discussions. This approach is supplemented by an examination of secondary data, such as a review of existing laws catering to the elderly, policy documents, other DSWD administrative orders, as well as an examination of the PSA's APs and another survey called the Family Income and Expenditure Survey, or FIES. We initially targeted a total of 60 seniors from different categories coming from Metro Manila, Balance, Luzon, and urban and rural areas of Visayas and Mindanao. Primary data uh, were designed to be collected through face-to-face -face in, uh, interviews with senior citizens, including SOCPEN beneficiaries, seniors who have been denied cash assistance for whatever reason, elderly that had been delisted uh, after enjoying the SOCPEN cash assistance for some time, and those that did not intentionally avail of the SOCPEN. However, because of the pandemic, online interviews were conducted in place of face-to-face -face interviews and much fewer seniors than originally designed number of seniors participated in our interviews. Senior citizens interviewed for SOCPEN, for this uh, SOCPEN process interviewed uh, are mostly female in their uh, mid-60s and, uh, at, and at their advanced ages and are seem to be in, still engaged in the informal economy. In this cohort of 28 respondents, majority are widows and did not finish high school. For program implementers, a total of 33 implementer respondents from Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao participated in focus group discussions conducted. Over half, 54% of them, 
had been in the SOC 10 program for only five years and less, while the rest uh, had been in the uh, pro program uh, in uh, um, um, longer than five years with a handful clocked in at uh, about 10 years or so since the program in uh, uh, since program inception. Majority of the implementers interviewed were from the uh, uh, central office in Metro Manila, followed by Calabarzon, Eastern Visayas, and Region 10. The following are, are our key findings from the interviews and discussions uh, with uh, the SOC 10 program implementers and se selected senior citizens. Among seniors who are part of the program, they agree that SOC 10 is a vital means of providing social, assist social protection. When asked where the cash assistance goes, they claimed it goes to food and medicines and that sometimes family members also benefit from the food they give, uh, they bring rather. And uh, although they are grateful for the cash assistance, some of them claim that the amount is not enough for the, their maintenance medicines. They suggest that 1,500 pesos should be good enough to support their medical expenses. Beneficiaries expressed disappointment with the delay of payouts that was exacerbated by the pandemic uh, last year and the year before. Uh, payouts were already done semestral. While it makes sense for implementers to distribute cash twice a year because of simpler logistics and to reduce the risk of infections in the from the pandemic, but for the seniors, a quarterly payout is preferred as waiting for half a year is a long wait for them. Some elderly reported that they also get benefits from the LGUs, but this varies across locales. Some cities, such as the city of Manila, siguro iboboto ni Isko, no? uh, they are more generous to its elders than others. According to senior citizens interviewed, the application process into SOC 10 varies and can be easily politicized. One senior citizen claimed that some beneficiaries do not meet the criteria of indigency as prescribed by law, but become uh, recipients either because the pensioner exerts clout in the community or they are relatives of those who work in the barangay. Some submitted complete documents um, for application into the program, but were not interviewed. Others were interviewed several times before they eventually got into the program. In Metro Manila, some waited, wait listed applicants received verbal reports that they had qualified, but that they but they were not informed when the cash assistance would begin. While some were rejected outright, even without the customary visit of LGU staff to their domiciles. In the Visayas, many found the application and, and payout process efficient, however. Implementers fully understand that by design, SOCPEN should only be targeting indigent elderly and that the cash benefit is only meant to assist seniors with their food and medicines and not to fully support all their living expenses. According to implementers, one in five indigent uh, seniors do not actually get um, uh, do not actually uh, should not be qualified, no. But uh, later, we, when we show you data from nationally representative surveys, uh, we will show that under coverage of the poor is actually much higher than twenty percent. Uh, previous modes of uh, payouts include included fund transfers to LGUs, whereas uh, currently DSWD centralizes all the payouts. Some hybrid uh, arrangements continue to exist, however, uh, particularly for selected LGUs with a good track record of liquidation. Some SOCPEN beneficiaries receive their cash support from DSWD through daycare, daycare workers, others from payout centers, while, in are, while uh, others in areas where access to banks is easy, they get uh, their cash to cash cards. Since only a fixed number of beneficiary slots are given per barangay, some SOCPEN applicants get waitlisted until either someone dies or transfers out of the program. Practices, however, seem to vary. In some cases, the senior support will still receive the money after presentation of the death certificate, but in other places, the cash automatically will go to the waitlisted applicant. According to implementers interviewed, DSWD still does not have formal links with the SSS for cross-matching of SSS pensioners' names uh, reportedly uh, with uh, because of privacy issues. Oh my gosh, you know. 
Thus, it is safe to assume that there are SSS pensioners who may still be in the SOC 10 list. Lastly, implementers express strong concerns about the persistent pro problem of being understaffed in the program. Regular DSWD employees have to wear additional hats during payouts by becoming special disbursing officers or SDOs. In, in some areas, daycare, daycare workers and even healthcare workers are deputized to handle crucial activities such as facilitating applications of eligible uh, senior, senior citizens, conducting payouts, and addressing complaints and other issues. An often repeated complaint in the central office is that only seven people are tasked to work on the program despite fight SOCPEN becoming the second largest SOCPEN social protection program of the DSWD in terms of budget and beneficiaries next to Pantawid. A listing of all activities for the various phases in implementing SOCPEN would suggest that for a semestral disbursement, it would take a total of 175 days to conduct the entire program implementation, equivalent to eight months' work for what should actually be done in six months with the current human resources. Now, the, uh, the AAPs uh, of the PSA conducts a number of, um, uh, has a, collects a, a number of useful information that are pertinent to SOCPEN. Results of the AAPs 2020 in particular suggest that SOCPEN increased by 78.5% the old age pension coverage of SSS and GSIS in 2020, that was just at around 30.6% to 53.5%. SOCPEN reduced coverage gaps for the elderly, especially among the lower parts of the per capita income distribution. However, there is still a very big chunk of seniors without old age pension. Among the bottom 50% of per capita expenditure distribution, which per capita income rather, uh, which I referred to in um, previous work as low-income Filipinos, as much as 5.38 million senior citizens are without SSS or GSIS. And of these 5.4 million, 3.6 million are still not covered by SOCPEN. So in other words, SOCPEN has an undercoverage rate of 66.1% among the bottom 50%. AP's 2020 data also shows that a considerable share of senior citizens benefiting from SOCPEN actually do not need the assistance as much as two out of five senior citizen beneficiaries, or in other words, 41.2%, belong to the upper 50% of per capita income distribution and thus, we think of this as a program leakage rate. Further, as much as 282,000 out of the uh, estimated 3.2 million SOCPEN beneficiaries in APIS, equivalent to about 8.9%, are reported to be availing of SSS or GSIS pensions aside from SOCPEN. This, of course, may be a misunderstanding of the survey question, but it might also be possible that because of poor digitalization, the lack of a national ID for senior citizens so far, and also, as I mentioned earlier, because uh, there's no cross-matching with uh, SSS, at least institutionally, the linkage is not there between DSWD and SSS, there are cases of SOCPEN beneficiaries who may actually be escaping the scrutiny of validation processes at LGUs, as well as DSWD and other government agencies that are in charge of pensions. When we think of the current level of cash pensions provided to SOCPEN beneficiaries, we may wonder, how much is enough for senior citizens who are, you know, who are indigent? No? While there are plans in the legislature to, to double the current support to 1,000 pesos uh, for monthly stipends, an interview, interview suggested that they need 1,500. Well, well, is there a way to decide? What, what, uh, you may be using nationally representative survey data. So what we did was we used another survey of the PSA called the Family Income and Expenditure, Sur Expenditure Survey, the 2018 FIES, with, with, with the prices in that survey adjusted to 2020 prices. Uh, and because of this, we were able to notice that the current so SOCPEN cash assistance of 500 pesos is only around 7.5% of the average expenditures on food and health. 
at the bottom half of per capita income distribution. So DSWD and Congress may indeed need to seriously uh, increase no, the, the, the cash assistance. But uh, we were suggesting that maybe it should be done by having three levels of cash support. Maybe you give 1,000 pesos for the lowest income decile, 750 for the second decile, and uh, maybe 500 pesos for the third to fifth deciles. This will not only provide bigger assistance to those who are in need of um, bigger or in much bigger need, but all, will also correspondingly give a bigger relative impact on spending for the needy, as this amounts correspondingly to 17.7%, 12.3%, and 7% of the expenditures on food and health for the poorest of the poor in the first income decile, the poor but not subsistence poor in the second income decile, and the low income but not poor in the third to the fifth income deciles. In summary, the SOCPEN has contributed to improving coverage in the country's uh, old age pension system. The SOCPEN is uh, um, viewed very positively by uh, program implementers and senior citizens alike in the sense of the government providing social assistance targeted for indigent elderly who are without pensions. However, more than 10 years into existence, SOCPEN continues to have a number of implementation deficits, and we suggest the following. First, increase the value of cash assistance, but re-examine who should benefit from the program. Merely doubling the cash would just double the budget. So it's important to, for legislators and program implementers to examine if we really should be giving universal social assistance to senior citizens, uh, uh, accounting for costs, especially given the myriad of problems that we are facing amid the pandemic, or would we want to just continue targeting SOCPEN for merely indigent elderly? Second, however, we need to clarify the definition of indigence and tie this with Poverty, because what do you mean by indigent? Isn't that doesn't that mean poor, you know, or at least low income status for seniors? No? If, if we if if SOCPEN's target beneficiaries will continue to be uh, indigent seniors, the current definition that's used in the field to identify indigency is just too loose and lacks a poverty focus. While the listahanan is not a complete list of poor households, but it is still very useful. There could be ways to link. SOCPEN with the listahanan, since official estimates of poverty among the elderly continues, uh, tends to be very low, the DSWD could be using a more general set of poverty lines than the official poverty lines. For instance, DSWD could use the near-poor definition that, that, they have a, that they have defined for the elderly to identify indigent elderly, um, in which case um, the DSWD will have to delist a number of beneficiaries, particularly those in the upper 50% of the income distribution uh, using the uh, proxy means income data from this Tahanan. Further, DSWD could uh, differentiate cash assistance, making use of several income, cash, uh, income thresholds. We recommend 500 be given to those low income but not poor. Uh, in other words, those with incomes between the poverty line and twice the poverty line. 750 to those who are poor but not, but not subsistence poor. In other words, incomes between the, um, the, the, poverty, the subsistence poverty line and, and the poverty line. And 1,000 pesos monthly assistance for the subsistence poor. For this to work out, all SOCPEN beneficiaries must be in the listahanan so that their incomes can be estimated with the proxy means income model. This suggested scheme will reach a targeted around 5 million low-income senior citizens at a budget of 40 billion pesos. Third, um, deploy dedicated staff to the SOCPEN program alone. A persisting problem faced by SOCPEN is the dearth of personnel dedicated to the program. This seriously undermines the SWIFT and careful distribution of much-needed cash assistance, as well as analysis of SOCPEN beneficiary databases. Fourth, regularly update the SOCPEN operations manual, at least annually. Next, regularly update the social, the social pension beneficiary database and conduct regular analytics on it. 
it's crucial to merge the beneficiary database with other interoperable databases in the department, such as Listahanan, uh, the SWEDE indicators, um, the social amelioration program database, and for future databases to be developed, including the CD CBMS. If uh, SOCPEN beneficiaries are not in the Listahanan, the DSWD can request LG assistance to collect the requisite um, uh, data um, may, from CBMS maybe, and subsequently analyze the data gathered once the CBMS instruments have been finalized by the PSA. Lastly, the program must adopt a digitalization mode of cash payment to SOCPEN beneficiaries by using e-payments and e-wallets for cash distribution. It's critical that SOCPEN be understood by everyone as an attempt by government to provide old age security to seniors who need assistance the most. The suggestions given here can enhance services to lessen the logistical burden for current BSWD staff assigned to SOCPEN. While in the past, SOCPEN beneficiaries may have wanted a means of socialization by actually getting the cash, but with per persisting risks of COVID infections, the use of digital payments can protect the elderly. This is also a part, uh, a, partly a critical step for, for DSWD to uh, digitalize its processes. Although this might not be used for everyone, having this available can be a fast way to help seniors who need urgent help. In addition, the department should continue to strengthen its analytics on the use of its administrative data systems, especially to determine how far its social pro protection is impacting on empowering beneficiaries. Thank you. This ends my presentation. And thank you very much, Dr. Albert, for your clear and uh, comprehensive uh, presentation. So friends, uh, if you have questions, just uh, use the chat box, um, uh, type your answer there. And for uh, those who are watching us on Facebook, please use the comment section of Facebook. Okay, let's continue the conversation and this time we will hear from our invited experts on their comments and insights. So we'll hear first from the, the main implementing agency of the Sockman program, uh, the Department of Social Welfare Development or the DSWD. And we are honored to have with us OIC Assistant Bureau Director Maricel Deloria of the Program Management Bureau which leads the implementation of statutory programs for women, children, families, and communities, including the monitoring and provision of technical assistance along the implementation of the SOCPEN and centenarian programs for senior citizens. Director Deloria is a registered uh, social worker with extensive experience and engagement in social protection programs. She also worked as a social welfare attache, first at the Philippine Consulate General in Jeddah, and later at the Philippine Embassy in Riyadh, where she helped in promoting the rights and welfare of Filipinos in distress. She was also engaged in humanitarian response and has worked with member agencies of the National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Council. Director Deloria has a master's degree in National Security Administration from the National Defense College of the Philippines and a Bachelor of Science degree in Social Work from the University of the, Phil of the Philippines, Diliman. Director Deloria, ma'am, the floor is now yours. Yes, um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, so at the onset, uh, please allow me in behalf of the Department of Social Welfare and Development to um, congratulate the Philippine Institute for Development Studies particularly the team led by Mr. Jose Ramon Albert for um, coming up with this study entitled um, Social Pension Beyond 10, um, a process uh, evaluation of uh, the DSWD Social Pension Program for Indigent Senior Citizens amid the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, meanwhile, I seek your indulgence as I will have to switch off my camera in order to save uh, internet bandwidth. Okay. Okay. So, um, the study extensively presented a detailed analysis of uh, the processes in the implementation of the program from um, beneficiary validation and enrollment up until the payment of a social pension to the indigent elderly. 
It carefully and analytically highlighted the deficits and gray areas at every stage while um, carefully considering the different circumstances such as the very limited financial and human resources and the lingering effects of the COVID-19 pandemic that influence the effectiveness, efficiency, and responsiveness of the program. As we continually reform while we perform our responsibilities along the social pension program, we shall consider all the recommendations, namely increasing the value of cash assistance anchored on enhanced targeting system, introducing stratified mode of cash support, deployment of staff who will solely be engaged in the implementation of SOCPEN, updating the social uh, pension operations manual, use of Listahanan database to standardize social pension application process, and the use of updated social pension beneficiary database to conduct data analytics and digitalization of cash payments. As earlier stated, the detailed analysis on the processes internal to the SWD and to a certain extent, the engagement of the local government unit lay, units rather, laid down the premise and provided a solid ground for the said recommendations, taking note that most of these processes are led and practically owned by the DSWD. Now, as a quick update on the efforts of the department to enhance our processes, may we share that um, we are constantly updating uh, the program's standard operations procedure and the citizen's charter as we are now um, undergoing ISO certification. So, the, uh, the Social Pension National and Regional Program Management Offices are in constant coordination to update the social pension database. Um, we are also participating in various interagency as well as legislative discussions relative to the proposed increase in subsidies as we are support, supportive of this uh, proposal, as well as the uh, um, enhanced schedules no? and uh, mode of payments and distribution. The COVID-19 pandemic led to the conceptualization of mixed mode of subsidy distribution. Hence, the department forced partnership with the Land Bank of the Philippines to maximize the use of UCT cash cards in the provision of soft and subsidies. We have already submitted 3.4 million registered soft and beneficiaries to the LBP and more than 300,000 cash cards were already distributed. As we speak right now, we are um, undertaking a review of the social amelioration program implementation and we shall use the insights and learnings on engaging the financial service providers in the digitization of payments of SOCPEN subsidies. Now, the study also presented a comparative analysis of the social pension program in the ASEAN plus three no? highlighting the importance of human rights-based approach on care and support for older persons, espousing further the need to revise the way we view the elderly and aging. The paper also underscored that we should also recognize that while some of our elderly are vulnerable, others are physically healthy and capable of engaging in physical and um, uh, productive, no? Uh, activities, no? financially productive activities, that is. Shifting perspectives on the needs of our clients will also allow us to pan out and be able to see other key players in the government, private and business sectors, and the society in general. This will permit us also to look into their capabilities to assist the DSWD and contribute in enhancing the program for the elderly and somehow address the key challenges along limitations on financial and even human resources. Now, moving forward and anchored on the results of this study, we could perhaps overlay 
the lens of the whole of government and whole of society approach as we come up with a more comprehensive response to the needs of the elderly, not only of the frail and the sickly, but of those who are phys still physically healthy and um, have peculiar difficulties uh, uh, but have peculiar difficulties as senior citizens. Now, we note that we have beneficiaries or elderly who may be poor and uh, vulnerable, but possess employable skills and could um, possibly be engaged no, in employment. So perhaps we could look at how the business sector could move forward further onwards with their initiatives along hiring older persons in, cer in certain jobs that fit their skills, but of course, under a very um, closely supervised environment. We could also look into the labor market studies that some LGUs may have no? and use this as a reference in identifying um, capability build, uh, trainings no? for elderly in order to develop their skills that will match the labor market opportunities for the elderly at the city at the city or municipal levels. Now, still along whole of government and whole of rather whole of government and whole of society approach. Now, since the study also highlighted that uh, most of the beneficiaries use the pension they receive for medicines, we also could look at how the health programs for senior citizens could be further enhanced to minimize their personal and um, medical and medicinal expenses. No? Um, the, the idea is that um, while the social workers of the program integrate these concerns, um, health concerns so that in the social case management processes, including medical assistance as a major component of the program, will institutionalize the role of key stakeholders in protecting and promoting the welfare of the elderly. Along this, we could look into partnerships with uh, the Department of Health and um, check on how we could intensify the provision of affordable and accessible medical services and enhance field health coverage for the, for the elderly. Um, I will end at that point. And I'd, again, I'd like to thank um, the PIDS and everyone here for the kind attention and uh, congratulations to the PADS once again. Thank you and good afternoon. Thank you very much, uh, Director uh, Deloria, for your reactions on the PIDS study and also uh, for providing us some updates on uh, what the DSWD has done so far to uh, address some of the issues pointed out by the study authors. Okay, so friends, our next, next discussion is from the National uh, Commission of Senior Citizens, the N. CSC, uh, which is created by law to ensure the full implementation of laws, policies, and programs of the government on senior citizens. If you have been uh, intently um, listening to the presentation of Dr. Albert, he mentioned that um, um, programs um, such as the SWD program, such as uh, the uh, the SOC pen, um, is um, is, will be transferred. No, the transfer is is underway for um, some so, some um, the SWD programs such as uh, the soft pen. Okay, and um, okay. So we are honored to have with us today none other than its chairperson and chief executive officer, Attorney uh, Franklin Tijano. And prior to this position, he served as a city councilor, a two-time mayor of Iligan City, and an administrator and chief executive officer of PV Deck. Industrial Authority. His commitment to public service has been rewarded and recognized through awards such as the most outstanding city mayor of the Philippines Local Government Leadership Award, the Gawad Galing, uh, the Gawad Galing Folk Award, and the Conrad Adenauer Medal of Excellence, among others. He has, he has a bachelor's degree in economics from the University of San Carlos, and while teaching economics at the same university, he studied law and passed the bar in 1983. I now give you, attorney, Franklin Quijano for his comments. Sir? Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Asia Lassiar, for your persistence in convincing me to react. Uh, first, I'd like to, to thank uh, the leadership of uh, PIDS. Finally, after 40 years, I'm now able to interact with the leadership of PIDS under President Aniceto Orbeta. Junior and uh, and um, uh, 
relative, Dr. Gilbert Lianto. Um, Dr. Jose Ramon Albert, whose emphatic presentation is really causing jitters to uh, the ears, the inheritors of the, the work that are, that are to be transferred. Um, of course, Director Maricel Deloria for uh, a very uh, thorough explanation uh, of uh, the SOC pen. Friends, um, it's really an honor to be with you. Uh, and uh, I hope that uh, I will not just be reacting to PID's researches virtually. I really hope to see you in, uh, in, in person. I have been uh, your, your fan for 40 years, uh, being so exposed in, in economics and economic theories. Uh, but, but now I think I am now in applied research and applied economics. So I, I, I'd want to introduce my, my agency first uh, before going into the social pension, all for you to be able to understand uh, where we are coming from. Charles? Well, uh, I really salute the thorough presentation of uh, the team of uh, Dr. Albert. And uh, part of it is really how we would be able to wrestle the apparent hugeness of the work that, that we'll be inheriting. So offhand, perhaps uh, we would like to point out to you uh, some of the functions which we were able to uh, anticipate as the work that we will be doing uh, with the National Commission of Senior Citizens and in the process perhaps seek help from the think tank, the IDS. So I would really hope that you will put us under scrutiny so that we will be able to improve our work ahead. In the earlier, uh, perhaps uh, it is worth pointing so that uh, we will have some common understanding uh, of the works that uh, are to be given not only to us, but to the whole of government. I'd like to point out one uh, judicial legislation, which has really shifted some resources from the national uh, level to the local levels. This is what is called the Mandanas ruling. The Mandanas ruling uh, was passed and it made executory on April of 2019. And so uh, this ruling, this decision by the Supreme Court has practically, practically shifted all the programs uh, which were contemplated under the local government code and be shifted to the local government units. And the funds that are to be transferred would amount to more than a trillion. Um, the National Commission of Senior Citizens was made uh, final on July 25, 2019. And that means after the Mandana's ruling, the government through the legislative branch and the executive branch has decided that the function, the sectoral concerns and the function of uh, supporting the senior citizen, citizens will be transferred to the National Commission of Senior Citizens. Uh, I'd like to emphasize that because uh, there are certain debates that are going on on how we would be able to play our role uh, in whatever uh, definition that are going to be passed by this government. We just hope that uh, we will abide by the parameters uh, of the law. Then, uh, of course, uh, since we were uh, created on July 25, 2019. The appointments started in 2020. 
January for the first commissioner, May for the second commissioner, and this representation was appointed in September. And since there are supposed to be seven, uh, the three of us will not be able to, to do business because we are still a minority. It was only in January of 2021 that we were able to do business. In the process, however, we made preparations and uh, a lot of uh, discuss discussions were really uh, done before the appointment of the fourth commissioner, including the draft implementing rules and regulations. So we would like to report to you that uh, in October of 2021, the implementing rules and regulations for the National Commission of Senior Citizen was successfully published. And uh, therefore, we already have not only the law, not only the implementing rules, we also are happy that DBM uh, granted us initially the organizational structure, which uh, goes only up to the level of the region, and, and perhaps uh, the IDS will be able to help us on how we will be able to tackle and wrestle the, the problems and the challenges that we'll be facing, knowing that uh, we will have practi practically the same configuration as that of DSWD, uh, even hoping that perhaps we would be able to influence the decisions so that we will be present uh, on the municipality and city levels, knowing that our constituency, the senior citizens are actually very much in that level. So uh, we already have our budget, which started at 25 million last year, and now it has increased uh, to 171 million pesos. Uh, we still do not have our office spaces. We still have to put up our regional offices, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, maybe I'll start uh, commenting first on our programs before going into the soft pen. So first, we have a program designed to secure and protect the rights of the senior citizens not only on their physical, mental, and social rights, but also on the benefits granted them, and that includes the 20 plus 12 percent, 10 plus 12 percent, and all. So this is one program that we hope will be supported in the whole of government and uh, in the whole of nation. Um, the second one is, um, Perhaps PIDS would be able to help us on this. This is called SECADNA, Senior Citizens Action for Development and Nation Building. We realized, and you have pointed out aptly, together with uh, Director Deloria's uh, comment, that a lot of senior citizens are still very productive. And for that, perhaps, um, uh, Action researches, enterprise development, both for private and uh, and public, and uh, even uh, financial and uh, economic advisorship can still be entered into by senior citizens. Um, there are certain policy issues uh, that we have seen. Uh, which must be discussed here. One is the rigidity of our uh, civil service and our SSS laws, that retirement comes optionally at 60 and compulsorily at 65. Whereas uh, the recent discussion in, in the ASEAN and internationally shows that it may be possible that there is a, a, a cycle of employment and re-employment. It may be possible that a person may be able to retire not only twice, but thrice. I hope that our policymakers, our legislators and PIDS will be able to help us sort out this thing so that 
the senior citizens who are still strong, uh, who are compelled to retire, may still have uh, a lot of incentives to be able to serve our country. The other program is called Wellness Health Emergency Response. Although it may be similar to social pension, but in here, we give focus on the health of senior citizens, uh, the issue of immunity, the issue of uh, exercise, the issue of uh, um, nutrition and all. So we, on this aspect, would like to work with the other agencies in government, uh, the National Nutrition Council, DOH and all. Um, may I just skip social pension and mo move to uh, risk assess assessment and security management unit. We have found out that in disasters, senior citizens are most vulnerable and we realize that we need to really be part of uh, the preparation systems so that our vulnerable sector may be given more attention. The next program is uh, the, the usual in agency management, and that is uh, program plans and legislative liaisoning. The next is coordination. We are concerned that mentioning the amounts uh, that are being spent by government for support of our people, particularly the, social, the senior citizen, will need more in the future. Our estimates have shown that uh, we are going to be an aging society by 2030. And that means that not only would we need more funds to support uh, the growing number of poor senior citizen families, we also need um, a lot of other services. So we need to coordinate with all government agencies first, and also other countries learning from the experiences of Japan, China, and all. The next is what would probably be the most important for us as a beginning agency. This is database. We have found out that the items mentioned by Dr. Albert, including Listahanan may not be sufficient for the need of the National Commission of Senior Citizen because defining the universe of the senior citizen means that we have to really exactly know, is it correct that uh, we are 12 million or are we just 10 million? Or is it correct to say that the projection is 9.8? Knowing that Senior citizens are coming in every day. They're celebrating their birthday. We hope that we will be supported not only by government, not only by uh, um, the sector, but perhaps um, the knowledge centers of our country, including PIDS, may be able to help us define not just the income condition, but perhaps including the health profile of all senior citizens in this country. That way, we will not lay to waste some resources that are actually focused for senior citizens and sometimes are being buried because they are expiring. And uh, of course, we need a unit for participation, uh, communication, education, etc. May I now go into the social pension program? Uh, I guess we are all in agreement that social pension has done so much help, more importantly because we are in a period of the pandemic and a lot of our seniors have been impoverished, uh, not to mention that for a time, the seniors were not allowed out. And so, uh, a lot of questions about their physical, functional, and health uh, issues were raised. So uh, can we now move, Charles? Uh, again, I'd like to emphasize uh, the importance of database. 
And uh, the purpose is not just for social pension. We need to define the universe of all the seniors and more to come. So we need to have data on social economic profile, health profile, pension benefits, uh, degree of dependency, expertise profile, because we feel that, like we said, lots of senior citizens may be able to help this country in its turnaround. So we want to have a profile of all the skill sets, knowledge, and experience. And then, of course, the legal conditions that uh, uh, may affect the senior citizens. These are just some of the variables which we think uh, we would be able to uh, help if uh, we will get the support, not only from the national government, but also from PSA, PIDS, and all. Can we now proceed, Charles? So uh, one other venture that we would like uh, our friends to know is that uh, not only must we focus on uh, poverty, but also on AIDS-friendly programs, structures, culture, and subcultures, and all. So we hope that we, you will be able to join us in promoting AIDS-friendly cities and communities. Charles? So, uh, after all this, we are really saying that if senior citizens are tapped, their skill sets, their knowledge and experience will be once again used by society. We may be able to even address the issue of social support even better. Narrowing the gap, of course, is the, so the help of social pension but the more important concern is really sustainability and the sustainable development of the senior citizens uh, sector as a whole. Next, Charles. And so we hope that you will be able to help us uh, revisit the industrial and labor policies, including employment, retirement, and reemployment. Also, an inventory of the skills of senior citizens. I've been trying to, to uh, ask some senior citizens their skill sets, and I think they just have so much to share to the next generation. Of course, we are very much aware that we need reskilling and upgrading, especially with the uh, virtual world that we are facing. So all these things uh, are considerations that uh, the NCSC are also uh, looking at. Next. So um, we are actually of the belief that there is no substitute, substitute to addressing the restiveness of the senior citizen by saying everyone must receive, receive a universal social pension. I think that will put an end to the debate. Why am I getting uh, none and some are getting some, you know? Uh, so to us, the, the attitude of Senate and the lower house for a universal social pension may be acceptable. But looking at it seriously on the level of who gets what, if we have a very reliable database, I guess the proposal of the team of Dr. Albert is really what is best. 1,000 for the poorest, 750 for the uh, second decile, and 500 for the third to fifth decile. I guess uh, this is very um, equitable, except that we really have to improve our data generation system. Otherwise, a lot of debate will even be generated some more. Can we now proceed, Charles? So, we discovered that one of the efficient programs that are being implemented 
by DSW. D is the UCT, uh, which of course uh, was very well prepared, thoroughly done. And before the um, train law was implemented, they were already uh, having the discussions with the financial institutions. And, and so, so far, the UCT was able to deliver the wares, except of course, the fact that UCT has ended in 2020. The database of uh, the UCT is now used in the social pension program, except that there are delays. And, and therefore, I think we can improve on the delivery system using the UCT or the cast card system. Call it cast card, call it other names. I think we should use the more modern technology in addressing the welfare situation of our senior citizens. Next. So we thank you for giving us space to react. Uh, we can be contacted, and uh, like I said, I hope PIDS will be on our side. Uh, please let us know whatever goods you can deliver to us. We are still on the learning stage. We are not yet complete. We are organizationally, we are barely starting. And so we would like to tell you we are trainable in a whole of nation and whole of government approach. You can help us. Thank you very much and God bless. And thank you very much, uh, Attorney uh, Frank Kihano. Uh, Maraming pong salamat, sir. Thank you for telling us about uh, um, the uh, uh, the programs of the National Commission on Senior Citizens. And um, of course, your, your comments on the studies uh, uh, recommendations, sir. We will hear more from Attorney Kihano during the open forum. Okay, so for a balanced discussion, we also invited our representative from civil society and we are pleased to welcome to this public webinar the Coalition of Services of the Elderly or COSE, a non-government organization working with older persons since 1989. COSE's reaction to the study and its insights on how to promote the welfare for our senior citizens will be delivered by Mr. Dennis Destacamento, COSE's uh, project coordinator and a registered social worker. Um, Mr. Destacamento has been working with older persons, organizations in different parts of the country for almost 10 years now, um, in areas including organi organizational development, community-based programs, uh, disaster risk reduction and management, and social protection. And currently, he leads a project that aims to improve social accountability towards responsive and age-friendly local government units in Leyte, which includes uh, monitoring social protection program implementation like social pension. He has a bachelor's degree in uh, social work from the university from the Universidad de Manila and now taking his master's degree in social work at UP Diliman. Okay, so I now give the give the floor to Miss uh, Mr. Dennis this Takamento of uh, Cose. Dennis? Yes, hello. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, on behalf of our executive director, Miss Emily N. Berbiblico, uh, we at Cose we would like to express your our heartfelt uh, gratitude to Pete to speak up with you today, and of course. Uh, malaki din ang aming pasasalamat doon sa, sa paggawa po ng study na ito. Isang patunay lamang po ito that we are taking care of our older persons. No? Na tinitingnan natin at inaaral natin ng mabuti yung mga programa at serbisyo na nakalaan po sa kanila. So, uh, today I will be very straightforward, straightforward po doon sa aming comments and uh, recommendations po. I'm very sorry, hindi ko pala nag-play ang aking ano presentation. Ayan, so, so my presentation will focus on the reactions and comments on the SOCPEN at 10, a process evaluation of the DSWD social uh, pension program for the indigent senior citizens amid COVID-19 pandemic. So, 
Yes, tulad po ng nabanggit ko, it's magiging straightforward po tayo, no? And we will be focusing on our uh, our comments and reactions on the policy recommendations po na ilatag sa atin, bunga po ng pag-aaral po na ito. So, on the policy recommendation number one, the increased value of cash assistance pensions, but we examine who should benefit for the social pension program. Ang stand po natin dito is we definitely agree on this because uh, based on our experience with working with the older persons, the benefit level of 500 per month has become insignificant and its purchasing power has been fully eroded considering the inflation rate for the past 10 years. So, kung ikaw ay isang senior citizen na tumatanggap ng 500 pesos per month, kung dati ay nakakabili ka ng pagkain at gamot at the same time, baka this time is gamot lang or uh, worse is pagkain lang po talaga. So, medyo maliit po talaga yung 500 uh, pesos per month. And the second recommendation Clarify the definition of indigents and tie this poverty status of seniors. Differentiate pensions for subsistence poor, yung 1,000, poor but not subsistence poor, 750, and low income but not poor is 500 pesos. So, uh, ang stand po namin dito ay medyo hindi po kami, no? hindi po tayo sang ayon na sa ganitong klase ng schema. O bakit po natin ito naisip, no? Or bakit natin tinututulan po ito? Uh, kasi in, in together with the ACAP Coalition or Action sa Pension Coalition, it's composed of multi-sectoral uh, uh, organization network. So we're in, we believe that maintaining social pension for indigent senior citizens will only perpetuate corruption, favoritism, and nepotism as part of the targeting errors. No? So kung titignan po natin, nakikita po natin ito kasi kung sa current po natin na system na meron na tayong uh, isa lang pong category no, for, for the benefits, eh, medyo mahirap na po siya, maraming ng corruption, maraming favoritism na nangyayari, eh, mas lalo na po na mas maraming indicators ang titignan dito po sa ating recommendation po na ito. Second, uh, cause I believe that further uh, reinforcement, no, it further reinforced the existing in in efficiencies in program implementation. So, um, nakikita po natin at admitted po na lumabas po sa study na marami talagang uh, in efficiencies dun sa program implementation natin. Uh, we are trying, no, nakita naman natin na tinatry din talaga ng DSWD on how to improve this. Pero having this type of categorization will only reinforce yung mga kasalukuyan na nating problema sa targeting errors, problema natin sa, sa admin cost, at marami pang iba po. And last one, nakikita din namin na mas, uh, nakakahikayat ito ng disunity and fragmentation among the senior citizens because they have to to prove themselves no halimbawa ako ay isang senior citizen so kailangan ma-prove ko na ako ay bahagi dun sa subsistence poor para makakuha ako ng 1000 and the other is okay so hindi hindi ko kayang ma-prove so magkakaroon ngayon ng hindi pagkakanoan between the sectors eh kung yung ngayon nga na 500 pesos per month ay nagkakagulo na sila lalo na po dito sa ating uh, lalo na po kung ganito yung magiging schema po natin and cause also no, believe that the proposed categorization of beneficiaries will make the application process more difficult and costly. Why? Because it requires more time in the selection process. No, although may binabanggit tayo dito na ayusin natin yung listahanan o yung database natin, but hindi natin maalis yung katotohanan na pagdating sa implementation is meron pa rin hindi or hindi... Uh, Meron pa rin problema na posibleng umusbong dito, lalo na pagdating sa selection process. So, mas maraming validation, mas maraming na proseso po yung kailangan pagdaanan para po ma-sure ma na yung, yung taong tatanggap dito ay nasa saktong category po siya. Second is need more human resources to do the task. No? So, kung problema natin is administrative cost, is possible na mas tataas po siya. And last one, as emotional stress or burden to older persons trying to prove their eligibility. So, dito po is, kung ikaw gusto mong magkaroon ng 1,000 pesos, 
So dapat lumabas doon sa validation at ano ng 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 uh, DSWD or ng NCSC na dapat karapat dapat ka sa 1000. So mas mas nagiging mahirap sa isang senior citizen na maka-access po sa ganitong programa kung mananatiling ganito po yung uh, selection natin or yung categorization natin ng mga beneficiaries. Then uh, sa isang uh, consultation na ginawa po no, isang papel na consultation ng lahat ng mga recommendations po ninyo. We have a consultation with few other person leaders po ng aming partner communities. At isa ito po sa pumukaw sa amin, no? Sabi niya po ng isang 80 years old na senior citizen, sa rekomendasyon na yan, mas lalong magkakaproblema sa proseso ng pagpili ng beneficiaries dahil parang mas mahirap na siyang tukuyin. Hindi rin ito sinusolusyonan ang kasalukuyang problema ng social pension. Mukhang papalalain pa po niya o mas palalain pa niya. So, ito yung, ito yung konkretong uh, boses no, mula sa ating senior citizen na nagsasabi na posibleng lalalala yung problema natin kung, kung ipagpatuloy po natin yung ganitong categorization of beneficiaries. So, with all of this, no, doon sa, sa mga nabanggit ko po at sa resulta ng study, ay mag-iiwan po ako ng isang question no, sa ating researchers Kasi po, uh, although binabanggit nyo po yung universal social assistance, pero we, would, we just want to also uh, hear kung ano din po yung perspective ninyo with regards to the universal social pension. So, yan po. Iwan ko po muna yung question na yan. I'll go for the recommendation number three. So, yung deploy dedicated staff to the social pension program alone. alone. So, we at COSE, we definitely agree with this, no? Kasi po, Kung titingnan po natin, eh, mahirap mag-implement kung marami kang programs or projects na hawak. So, naniniwala kami na kung mayroong, mayroong dedicated staff talaga for social pension, it will help, no? It will help the staff or to have more chance to master all the implementation processes. Kasi ang tendency, hindi napapalitan yung mga tao. So, dahil medyo matagal na sa, sa proseso, so, Mas, mas malaki yung chance na naman ma-master na yung lahat ng proseso dun sa implementation. And last one is more time to address complaints and grievances about the program. Kasi po, kung meron tayong sole, uh, meron tayong sole uh, staff po para sa social pension program, mas matututukan no, yung mga reklamo, lalo na sa panahon na wala, pa mas, wala pang payout or they are still preparing for, for the payout po. I'll go for the recommendation number four, no, yung update yung social pension uh, operation manual, at least annually. So definitely, cause naman po is nag agree po dito, but we just want to to emphasize na uh, gawin po natin siyang every other year or as the need arises to give ample time for the program implementers to properly practice the content of the manual po, no. So kasi kung titingnan po natin ang isang dalawang payout or tat isa o dalawang payout, ay hindi ito sapat para ma-practice o ma-perfect ng mga program implementers natin yung mga nakalagay sa, sa manual of operation natin. So, we give them ample time para magkamali at matuto at medyo i-adjust po siya. And sa recommendation number five po, yung standardized social pension application process, we are uh, supporting this one, no? Because some of the LGUs are not following the prescribed standard by the DSWD and implement their own standards instead. So ito po yung nakakalungkot kasi working with older persons, working with LGUs from different parts of the countries is meron at meron po silang sariling pamamaraan kung paano nila mapapaganda yung implementation ng kanila mga programs and services. And I think that's a uh, that's a good point for me for our next recommendation. Na magkaroon ng consolidate no or yung DSWD at saka NCSC is magconsolidate o i-consolidate lahat ng good practices ng lahat ng LGU or kung ng majority o yung may mga good practices lang para po makonsider natin sa paggawa ng standard ng social pension application process. Kasi honestly po, working with the LGUs, meron po silang magagandang uh, practices na pwede po nating paghalawan at pwede po nating ma-apply sa iba't ibang LGUs. Recommendation number six, regularly update the social pension beneficiary database and conduct analytics on it. So very supportive naman po kami talaga dito kasi 
minsan yung mga data natin, outdated na siya. So, ang akala natin buhay pa yung isang senior citizen, pero patay na pala siya. Pero dahil hindi regularly or hindi ganun kadalas yung pag-update, so nasasama siya dun sa program. So, sa kose, it's, uh, ito yung dahilan kung bakit mas uh, gusto natin na regularly na ma-update siya para ma-ensure natin yung lahat ng data natin ay relevant no mula sa pag-identify ng social pension beneficiaries, sa pag-allocate ng budgets at iba pang aspeto po ng uh, program. Then, magkaroon po sana ng isang malinaw no, na database uh, for older persons or kung ito man ay integrated with other database. But the important thing is that clear yung datos na makukuha natin about the older person. So, we look at it at sana ito ay based at the local government units where they can regularly update the data and immediately trans transmit it to the server at the national level or regional level po. And maximize the existence of older persons organization in collecting and updating data of older persons. So yun po nakikita natin na mahalaga po yung role ng mismong mga older persons kasi they know their members po at pwede po natin yun ma-maximize. And for the last recommendation, yung adapt a di digitization mode of cash payment to SOC pen beneficiaries by using e-payments and e-wallets for cash distribution. So we also agree on this, but with, with some uh, reservation or reminders lang no, sa atin pong lahat, na dapat yung uh, safeguarding uh, features and mechanisms must be properly installed. So nan, uh, kami po sa COSI, tinitingnan po no, na itong digitalization is an opportunity, but sa, uh, on the other hand, ito ay posible po maging subject din ng abuse. So, mahalaga po na may safeguarding features po tayo and mechanisms. And also, we must treat this one as an option for the beneficiaries along with other modes of payment. So, parang kung halimbawa ang isang senior citizen ay nasa remote area siya, technically, hindi natin pwedeng gamitin ito. Or kung isang senior citizen opted not to use digitalization kasi may, baka may magamit o ma-abuse ma ng mga kamag-anak niyo or someone taking care of him or her. So, pwede po natin sila bigyan ng options. And note that digital, uh, digitalization mode of cash payment alone will only add to the susceptibility of older persons to financial abuse. So, kaya po dapat gawin talaga siyang hybrid. No? So, isama siya doon sa iba pang mode of payment po. Then, uh, additional lang po, as we, we observe no, the, the, the results of the study, uh, most of the respondents, including the older persons in the program implementers, mentioned the social pension program is being politicized. No? So, siguro po, iwan namin itong question na ito for the, our researchers. Do you have any recommendations on how to concretely address it? And uh, siguro... Uh, I will take the opportunity to share some of the recommendations from our end. No? So first is we have to enhance the social accountability mechanisms for the social pension program. So we have a recommendation to strengthen the complaints and grievance mechanisms of the program, like creating a senior citizen's help desk, which COSE is currently implementing in some of the LGUs. And increase the involvement, engagement of older persons organizations in the monitoring and implementation of social pension program, not just in the selection or in the payout, actual payouts, but also in the validation and other processes. Po. Kasi para mas ramdam po nila yung programa at they are uh, greatly involved in that. Then of course, po, ito bagong recommendation po ito, no, or... Uh, Yung creation of selection committee or task force at the local level to screen all the applications for social pension before sending them to the region. So dito po ina-emphasize natin sana na yung role ng OSCA, ng DSWD or MSWDO, ng federations and other CSOs within the LGUs na pwedeng maging bahagi ng committee. So they will be the one to select or uh, screen no, yung lahat ng applications. Then, doon na po ako sa takeaways po for the, the three takeaways. First, the social pension program provided significant impact or improvement in the lives of social pensioners, especially if we will increase or widen the coverage. However, the chance 
the change of payout schedules from quarterly to semestral defeated the main purpose of the program, which is to augment the daily subsistence of our older persons. Therefore, we suggest that the payout must be done quarterly or monthly if the amount increases. Second takeaway, uh, COVID-19 pandemic exacerbated the needs of senior citizens, pushing most of the older persons struggling to make ends meet due to loss of income, loss of support from children whose livelihoods are also affected by the pandemic. Therefore, POSI is calling no, the DSWD or SCSC, na malilipat sa kanila yung programa, or other program implementers to rethink how to expedite the delivery of pensions and make it more accessible for all the beneficiaries to at least minimize the current burden faced by the sector. But we recognize yung ilang mga actions na rin po ngayon ng DSWD in expediting the program. And last one, uh, one of our takeaways is that the result of this study validates no, the need to push for the universal social pension as USP will remove the targeting and exclusion error that the current social pension program has, thereby capturing the majority of senior citizens who are marginalized. Then USP is also a feasible and affordable investment for the Philippines. It would recognize the lifelong contributions to nation building made by senior citizens throughout their lives. Then as an end, no? so as you can see, it's uh, financially demanding yung aming recommendations, but we should take the no, social pension program as not merely as social welfare for the older persons, no? but instead we must uh, consider it in the premise of social justice. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you. And thank you very much, uh, Mr. Dennis this Kakamento of the commission of the coalition of uh, services of the elderly or cause. Um, he uh, um, then is uh, address some questions to uh, our researchers, but uh, let me park those because uh, for the open forum because it would be also good to hear the uh, responses of our of all our uh, um, discussants. Okay, not just. Not just uh, Dr. Albert. Okay, so at this point, okay, let's let's have um let's have a break, you know, and and um to to uh, kick off the open forum, let's have a poll. Okay, um as as you can see, there have been varying uh opinions on one of the recommendations of Dr. Albert and his co-authors, particularly on um differentiating the pension amount uh depending on on need no and um, they said that okay those who are subsistence poor will receive a higher amount so they gave three amounts 1000 pesos for the subsistence poor 70 for those who are poor but but uh, not subsistence poor and 500 pesos for the low income but not poor um okay if if you will recall attorney uh frank um uh, said that this is okay, but it's contingent upon a reliable database of qualified uh, senior citizens. While uh, Dennis um, is more, uh, Dennis, uh, on behalf of uh, Jose, said that okay, they're more for a universal uh, social social pension. Okay, so at this point, uh, I would like to uh, get your thoughts. Okay, and uh, we en we enjoin you to um to um answer this poll question it's a yes or no question okay this is an opinion poll should the government differentiate the pension amount for senior citizens under the SOCPEN program depending on their poverty level okay is it yes is it a yes or a no okay so please answer the question now we're giving you only five seconds okay Gwen um please let us know closing the poll now Mom Sheila okay thank you very much so for those who are uh, watching us on facebook hopefully you also answer the question because we flash it on facebook so we will announce the results later this is an opinion poll so there is no right or wrong answer but uh from those who participated as a token of our gratitude we will pick uh, two names each from webex and facebook and we will give them a prize and i will announce the results of the poll a little later and the names of our poll winners before we close the webinar. Okay, so let us now go to the open forum. Okay, 
And the um, director Deloria will be represented in the open forum by Ms. Mira Melaxa, Division Chief of PSWD Sectoral Program. And uh, Dr. Albers, co-author in the study, Ms. Jennifer Monte, will also join the panel. So, okay, let us now uh, start entertaining questions. Okay, uh, please hold. Okay, perhaps um, let me begin by, um, uh, let me begin with a question uh, fielded by, by Dennis, no, about uh, the universal uh, uh, social pension. And this question actually was specifically addressed to, by Dennis to our speakers. But of course, I'd like to also ask the insights of our of our uh, discussions, particularly, of course, uh, the DSWD and um, Attorney Frank. Okay, um, Toots, yeah. uh, would you like to kick uh, off the discussion? Let, let, yeah, let me start with, with, with that because I know Kose has always been suggesting this universal cash assistance for uh, for years now. I, I've read their papers, uh, but I, I my question always is, can we afford it? Uh, right now, we, it's 23 billion. I mean, the, that's the that's the amount of money for SOCPEN. Let's assume that we use the 1,500 reported in the FGDs with the seniors that that's what they need. 1,500. 11.8 million times 12 months. 1,500. Do you know how much that will all cost? It's 2,212.4 billion. 10 times what we currently are spending for SOCPEN, where are we going to get the money? That's the main, main issue. You can always say, let's do it this way, let's do universal. But many governments are not doing universal because they can, even the rich countries, they don't always do universal because they cannot afford a rich countries na ngayon. Tayo pang low, low, ano, lower middle income. Can we afford? That has always been what I have been just asking. Do we, can we afford? If we can, go ahead. But if we cannot, why will you adopt a program when you cannot even find money for it? It's not sustainable. It's the same set of things that, you know, we always ask government, let's do this, let's do this, let's spend. But do we have the resources? That's the first thing I ask. Now, 23 billion right now. So doubling from 500 pesos monthly, doubling to 1,000 will cost We'll make it 46 billion, okay, with the current sets of beneficiaries. Now, that's why I was saying maybe this is not the way to do it because when we looked at APIs, some of the, well, I'm not even going to get even to the numbers. There's a big chunk of people who are in the, in the middle to, to upper income who don't need <laughs> this kind of support. So why will you give 500 pesos even to them? when they don't need it that has been my question always if you do, if you need it fine you know but if you don't need it shouldn't you be shouldn't it also be socially responsible to give it to somebody who actually needs it so that's why i was just toying around with some numbers and i said maybe the way to do it is because we have to think of risk each person who is in more need in fact that is the whole point that if you are in more need you should be helped more so the only thing is how do you operationalize this but we have a listahanan we're able to sort households by income so it, and that will remove politicization politicization already of lgus it's very simple to operationalize and use already what we have available. Now, some people will say listahanan is not imperfect. Fine, but then, you know, the listahanan was originally meant only for poor households. Now I am making it to extend even to the low income, which will cover so many households. You know, so I just, I mean, I'm just telling you that this is this is something that, that, seem, that will make sense at the short to medium term. At the long term, if you want, if we want to give to everyone, that's also something that we can do if we can afford. But right now, can we afford with all the myriad of problems that we currently have? That is only what I'm posing. I'm just giving a lot of options for us to think about. But the, the reality is you always have to start off with asking what can you afford? Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Toots. Okay. I saw... Uh... 
Attorney Frank nodding his head, grinning. <laughs> sir, could you uh, uh, share us your insight, sir? Well, uh, Dr. Sheila, having been exposed to politics myself, that, you know, debate will have no end if one would have, who would still want to receive some. I, I think the line of least resistance is really give to everyone. So, and yet I, I realize that like what uh, Dr. Thoughts Albert is saying, pag reliable yung database natin uh, at walang issue dun sa data privacy and all the government agencies are working together. PSA, PIDS, everyone. Talagang reliable yung database, di ba? And the changes in the database is real time. Pag may natanggap kang pera galing kay anak sa OFW, etc. Magre-reflect siya. I think uh, it's going to really address the issue of who really is poorest, who is, uh, you know. But again, uh, that's, that's my need din eh. Dr. Sheila, that's my need. I need to have a database myself right now. And it seems that it's a mountain to climb. So, so to me, eh, kung ganun lang naman, magdi-debate lang tayo rin, sige, universal pension na. But again, uh, Dr. Albert, uh, I really am, you know, I, I really feel for, for you and that difficulty of, you know, helping. Remember, these are just the, the support funds pie. Mm -hmm. My goodness, we have lots of problems for the senior. One is my regular check basa hearing. Am I not shouting to you now? Diba? Eh, wala tayong ganong sustainability programs. O, yung seniors, hindi po check yung hearing. Pati yung hearing aid, problemado. Hindi lang hearing. Mata, uh, oral hygiene, etc. So, ay nako. But still, I, I, I hope that uh, we will be able, like what uh, Dennis is saying, we will be able to design a system which is equitable and unjust. Yun lang ang nakikita kung ano. But we have to sit down on it some more. Thank you very much, Attorney Frank. Ms. Miramel, um, Lacks of the DSWD, what is the DSWD's take on this, and what ha, what is the what has uh, the department uh, done in terms of uh, um, addressing um, uh, the exclusion exclusion rate, the, the leakage, the leakage? Uh, I I think you have been actively uh, uh, interacting with our <laughs> with our uh, WebEx participants uh, because some of them have questions on the on the exclusion rate. So. Would you please uh, enlighten us on this? Yes, uh, Ma'am Sheila, as, as mentioned uh, a while ago by Director Deloria, um, ideally, uh, the, the universal social pension ay maganda, di po ba? Sabi nga ni uh, Chair Kehano kanina, ang dami naming nare-receive na mga grievances na kasama si may SSS ito, pero kasama siya, yung mga ganun po. But then, uh, realistically, hindi nga po kakayanin ng ating... Uh, uh, budget sa gobyerno. And then, uh, looking further, ano po, uh, hindi lang naman po kasi social pension ang kailangan ng ating mga matatanda. Ano po, sabi nga di kanina ni Director Deloria, we also need to improve further yung mga health services being given to our senior citizens. Kasi nga di po ba, kung nakita natin kanina, majority of the pie, nagagastos yung social pension both food and the medications of our senior citizens. So most likely, if we are to improve the health system of our uh, government, ano po, of our country, medyo mababawasan na yung uh, kailangan ilabas na pera ng mga senior citizens for their medication. So, uh, yung universal social pension ay uh, medyo, yun nga po, hindi din kami uh, 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 amenable po doon, but more on improving other services that we have uh, that would really benefit our senior citizens. And in terms of the inclusion-exclusion error po, yun nga, nabanggit ko nga po kanina sa chat, medyo malaki talaga. 
Kasi nga po, as mentioned din, uh, uh, sa study ni, um, uh, ni Dr. Uh, Albert, ano po, uh, hindi namin nakuha kasi i-cross match yung ating datos doon sa mga SSS pensioners. We only relied on those senior citizens and their family members na nag-declare po na ay may SSS po kami. So, uh, as much as possible, yun nga po, as mentioned din by Chair Frank, ano po, kung talagang uh, magtutulangan sana tayo, uh, kumbaga, in terms of the data, ay mas open tayo sa isa't isa para mas mag-match natin sino nga bang may SSS, sino nga bang may GSIS, sino nga bang may PIVAW, ay mas madali po sana sa atin yung pag-aayos, pagsasaayos ng ating data. It all boils down to the data. If we have good reliable data, then I don't think na ganoon kalaki ang mga grievances po natin. Yun po, ma'am. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Ms. Uh, Miramelaxa. Uh, Toots, were you raising your hand? Were you? Yeah, yeah. I, 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 was, I was just going to say, kasi alam mo, uh, naaawa rin ako sa BSWD that, that when we found out that they don't even have an implementation arrangement with SSS, they're not able to cross match with SSS. And, I, and, and, the, and, and, the, and what is being used as an excuse is data privacy. When in fact, data privacy should not be a barrier for, for, for institutional arrangements. Because, mm -hmm. you know, it does not mean that where data privacy means, ah, ano, top secret, nobody can see it. No, 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 no. Even in Estonia, which is a very rich country, which, which you know, which is the most digital country in the world where you can actually vote on your cell phone. That is not an issue. You are able, you are able, if I am, if I get sick, I am in a hospital, I, I'm, I'm able to trans, the, the hospital should be, uh, in, in, in my regular hospital should be able to transfer all my, my health data to another hospital. That is not a violation of data privacy. That is in, ensuring that, you know, data privacy is about, uh, you know, protecting the rights of people that if you don't get harmed. But you know, there is no harm if it's, I'm going to benefit. You know, if some, so that's why I'm just, I just feel so bad for the SWD. Honestly, that there are no, there are no uh, very strong in, uh, linkages. But having said that, I hope even the SWD within, you know, I'm just, I'm just worried. How come you know the the the, the listahanan is still divorced from Sokpen? There should be a way of linking this, you know, even with names of people and, you know, and addresses and, and don't use data privacy again as an excuse because that's within this WD, you know, so it could be done. So that way, when you transfer the responsibility of SOCPEN to, 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 uh, the, to, to the commission, to the new commission, it will be easier for them because I feel for, uh, for, 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 for the, uh, the commission, uh, the National Commission on Senior Citizens, it will be a big headache if you transfer this program just like that without the you know without capacity building for them without that necessary you know digitalization tools for them to uh you know i i really feel for them <laughs> i mean they, they don't even have a, a building right is <laughs> he's told the yeah, where we are told so i mean uh, uh these kinds of things i think we have to be careful because if we if we don't do, if we don't design things well, we don't we don't implement things well. Uh, you know, the the impact of this will will will, will really be problematic. You know, so I, I think we we need. That's why I, I keep pushing for a lot of the, the use of digitalization because mm -hmm. I think that this will be. Of course, the, I think it was pointed out by Kosi. This is also right. Digitalization should also be used with together with ensuring you know that that, that people are not harmed somehow. You know, because especially now. No, no, I, you know that there are a lot of all of these fake things happening even with digital. So I mean that's that's a valid point. But I don't agree with this point uh, that the the that the that you know that uh, that not using the the three tier that I am mentioning will will be actually worse. Actually, there there's it, it's not going to be worse. I mean the, this is just a, a suggestion. You could wor work with his suggestion of universal, but can we afford it? That's my point. You know, and right now I don't think I don't think any of the legislators will be able to find any money for having a universal social pension. I mean, if that is what we would like to have. But what would you like? Give universal social pension, but only fifty pesos to uh, all seniors, or uh, you know, I mean, uh, because we'll also have to figure out how much can we give. That's another thing too. 
So it's it, there are a lot of questions. Now I'm just throwing some things based on data, based on what I see from the data from FIES and, F and APs. I, I we mentioned this and also from our discussions with with the seniors and the implementers. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Toots. As always, we agree to disagree. <laughs> Okay, and and now uh, we uh, we have this uh, public webinar so we can uh, hear the um, um, opinions of um, our stakeholders. Okay, so let's move to another uh, topic. So um, as as pointed out er, earlier, you know, um, the transfer of SOCPEN, of the SOCPEN program to uh, the commission is imminent. Okay, it's happening. It's happening soon the eventual the full transfer i i believe uh attorney uh chair frank no and uh, we have a question here from uh miguel lima from the office of uh senator sani angara and he is asking um he wants to know the um opinion of all the panelists on the transfer of the sockman distribution from the dswd to the national commission of senior citizens how would the transfer transfer from the DSWD to the NCSC be accomplished? How much funding would be needed to establish the nationwide network and other requirements or additional personnel required by the NCSC? Uh, well, in the presentation of uh, Attorney Frank, he mentioned that last year they were given a budget of uh, like 25 million, if I'm not mistaken, and then for 2022, they have 171 million, I think. But but uh okay let me now give the the floor to okay let's let's start with dennis dennis what can you say about you know would you have anything to say about uh this transfer yeah hello po. No, so uh cause has been working with uh ncsc quite some times and we already know, you know, yung totoong sitwasyon nila doon, lalo na sa usapin po ng, ng structural uh, situation po nila. And transferring this program to them is a very big challenge, no? So kasi kung titingnan natin yung DSWD itself, na meron siyang maraming staff, marami siyang mga capacities, yung skills ng kanyang mga staff ay nandiyan, it's uh, still they experience various uh, problems when it comes to the implementation of social pension program at nabanggit din na pangalawa ito sa pinakamalaking programa po ng ating pamahalaan so talagang malaking challenge ito sa sa NCSC kaya nga po ang ang nirerekomenda natin na sana no ma-ensure talaga na yung transition period is ma-maximize talaga siya at maipakita din na yung yung bulk ng responsibility uh, in the implement for the implementation of the program and the capacities of the NCSC ay magmamatch. Kasi kung hindi, baka yung problema natin na meron tayo ngayon sa DSWD implementing the social pension program ay magdodouble o magtitriple lang kapag prematurely itinanspire natin yung responsibilities na hindi handa yung NCSC. So crucial dito yung skills ng mga tao, yung budgets, Ano mo yon and yung yung transition period mismo dapat mas 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 ma maximize at mas mabigyan natin ng diin yung kahandaan po ng SCSC. But of course we recognize no na na maganda din talaga kasi bilang isang institution na magiging bosses magiging ano ng mga nakatatanda maganda na yung ownership ay mapunta sa kanila. But we must carefully uh, address yung mga concerns before we fully uh, transfer sa kanila yung responsibilities. Thank you. Salamat, Dennis. Okay. Um, Ms. Salaksa, uh, I think you've, uh, you've answered this question in the chat box. Maybe, maybe you can, you know, um, for, for the information of everyone who's watching this. Uh, yes, Ma'am Sheila. As know. part of the preparation of that transition to the National Commission on Senior Citizens, ay bungo po ang DSWD ng tinatawag naming Change Management Team. This is headed by Undersecretary Luz Ilagan. Ano po? And uh, yun, uh, we have met several times. At um, madami pa po kaming mga meetings na ikakandak pa. And part of that is the um, discussions on the transition plan, uh, including the personnel na matatransfer po sa commission who are with DSWD now, as well as uh, yung 
iba pa pong pangangailangan na tao ng magiging commission just to ensure na maayos nga po ang magiging implementation natin itong um, not only the social pension but also the centenarian program and other uh, programs, auxiliary services for the older persons ano po, including yung ating mga residential care facilities kaya hindi po kasi biro ang pagta-transfer ng program ano po, given this much fund and given this huge targets that we have Kaya kinakailangan slowly but surely ay uh, aayusin po ang pag-uusap na yan. And uh, just lately ay uh, naipresent na rin po sa amin ni Chair Frank yung proposed organizational structure ng NCSC at naipakita nga po kanina yon And so far yun po, uh, nakikita naman natin na um, eventually comes uh, twen uh, later part of 2022 until the first quarter of 2023 ay uh, magiging maayos po ang pag-transition pag natin. Kasi nga po, As part of the whole transition plan, hindi po minsanan ang magiging paglipat. So, yung mga programa na medyo simple pa lang at hindi kinakailangan ng maraming tao at uh, malaking pondo like the centenarian and other auxiliary services for the older persons, yun muna po ang unang matatransfer sa commission. And then later on na po yung ating social pension and then the residential care uh, program po. Yan, ma'am. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Lapsa. Sir, would you have any reaction to the uh, um, attorney, Frank? Chair, um, Chair Gihana, would you have any reaction or comment to the uh, points um, stated by Ms. Laksach and Dennis? Dr. Asiela, my response may be longer than my reaction uh, before. Briefly lang, sir. Briefly, because we, have, we still have some, quest some questions no. in the chat box. Number one. Uh, we have seen how the social pension is being done. Okay. Um, right now, we are in the process of normalizing, and we would like to thank the SWD uh, for the very strong support. For instance, uh, they were the ones who recruited the regular employees for us last year. Uh, of course, there were only five. This time, we need an initial of 14 so that we can operate our uh, personnel selection and uh, procurement unit. In other words, all this time from 2019 until now, we have a procurement unit. So, paano kami magkakaroon ng computer, etc. Within the first quarter, and we sought the exception of Comelec, medyo sinuportahan tayo ni Comelec. So, si DSWD helping us would mean that within the first quarter, to the first semester, we will be able to operate on our own already. We have seen the program of uh, social pension with the SWD. And one unfortunate thing with that program is it is subsidy. When you put that nomenclature subsidy into the GAA, it means that with subsidy, you cannot hire regular employees, Dr. Albert. So yung social pension, wala pong regular employees. Sino po ang magdi-distribute sa funds ng uh, social pension? Ang makakakasa advance lang po at ang mabigyan ng uh, disbursing, disbursing power is only regular employees. That means that in the process, we are also been, we are, we are preparing already. Magkakaroon na kami ng regular employees within the the span of uh, first half to uh, third quarter, okay? Now, uh, but there are certain things that the SWD which impresses us. One is UCT. Ang galing ng UCT. Ano, yung banking system nila, na ano kagad. And so, you don't need to wait for three months or six months to be able to distribute to the senior citizens. Kasi may ATM eh. Agad-agad nakukuha yan. In fact, it can be daily if you have the funds. But of course, it's going to be monthly kasi monthly yung, ano, yung naibibigay yung subsidy. So, so to me, uh, I'd like to assure Dennis that uh, uh, ano, yung capability natin is really being given attention to. And uh, we can assure you that within 2022, as long as we get the support on the whole of government, including DSWD, kasi kasama namin sila sa whole of government, then we will be able to actually wrestle with that challenge 
of social pension being transferred to us. Kaya po natin kasi hindi na kailangan ng uh, magkakas advance pagka UCT style ang gagamitin mo. Sa banko ka na lang kumuha eh. Hindi na kailangan yung senior citizen dalhin mo sa isang gymnasium at uh, maghawaan dahil sa pandemic. Kasi may may ano na eh, may may instrument na. So, yung digitization na sinabi ni uh, Dr. Albert is really one solution. And a lot of uh, IT experts are volunteering. We you know, we can offer all these things. And then uh, pati yung mga um, mga distant places as long as you have Pera padala, ano yun, Luelier and all. As long as you provide the, the reader sa kanila, di ba, ma maano yan eh, makapag-withdraw yung mga senior citizens. So again, uh, it's really putting all our thoughts together so that we'll be able to address the issues. Thank you. Thank you very much, Attorney Kihano. Okay, um, let's jump to another question. And this time, this is for you, Toots. Um, okay. From Maricon Aranda Esguera, what do you recommend as an efficient way of determining the senior citizens who are subsistence poor, poor but not subsistence poor, and low income but not poor? Do you recommend uh, revising or improving the current listahanan? Oh, um, is already okay. I mean, they already have a, a proxy means model. It may not be perfect. It's I mean, there's no such thing as a perfect model because it's a model. But the only thing is, so there the, the thing is, I think people mistake the, the concept of, of inclusion and inclusion errors because when they were setting up listahan, they were just saying poor versus non-poor. But most of the people who were who were quote excluded or included all the er the errors the inclusion errors they may not be poor but they're low income you know so actually mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. you know so that's why i was saying that this would be the best way but within the poor there are also different ranks there are some some are really extremely poor poorest of the poor so giving them uh, 500 or 750 or even 1,000 may really be so little even for them. That's why I'm suggesting differentiate the support because that will make sense even for a Christian, you know, the, in, for a Catholic, diba? the last, you give your, your charity to those who need it most. That's in the, the canon law. Canon law says that, that, that you always give your charity and your love to those who need it most. So there is differentiated needs. So that's why I'm really thinking that will be the way to objectively help people. You use an objective way because you are not anymore using even a way of, uh, you know, of, of saying who is poor, who is done poor. You're not asking anyone, but you know, this is based on a model. It may not be perfect. You know, there could be grievance mechanisms as has been done in DSWD. So there are ways of handling this. But I mean, and this has been done even in the richest of countries, you know, even in New Zealand, there are there are so many things. But the only thing is, I think there should be a need also for, for interoperable databases. That's okay. the other thing too, because well, right mm -hmm. now, you know, you know, PSA has a national ID, but I don't know if many agencies understand what the national ID will be for. You know, so and not even just the national ID, you know, I went somewhere trying to buy something and then I presented the national ID and, P and the staff said, uh, it has no signature. Can I have uh, something with a signature? I said, no, because this is by law. I, I have something, but I will not show you. I, the national ID is a powerful ID. It has all my, 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 my bio, bio, bio signatures and everything. But the thing is, you know, people don't understand what it is for. So I think mm -hmm. we will need to imp improve these kinds of things. All the, the, the you know, helping each other. Even right now, Land Bank. I'm, I'm glad DSWD is using Land Bank uh, cards, cash cards. But, you know, I, I think we have to start re pressuring Land Bank into re realizing that they have to improve with the you know, with the pandemic, they 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 use private sector banks to also give give out the money. Why can they not continue doing that? I just wonder why can they not continue? Because land bank has not has not uh, uh, no, measured up to to innovation. Uh, they have much of them. They have practically all the government 
money. But yet they're not innovating as much. They're doing some innovation, but I, I'm, I'm sorry to say I'm not happy with land bank. All the time that I get my 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 sweldo from PIDS, it's always uh, you know uh, ano yung um, the, 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 ano is that working? No, the cash card. The, the, so I'm, I'm just very I'm not very happy with land bank to be quite honest. <laughs> Okay, okay. Let's let's uh, take a look at what our uh, participants think about uh, the differentiated um, pension amount. So, Gwen, can you can you flash the um, outcome of our opinion poll? Okay. Um. Nineteen. Well, it's <laughs> we really. Can't. Um, 18 answered yes and 19 answered no. So there are really varying opinions on this uh, on this issue. Okay. So perhaps uh, there's a Almost need for even. more, sir. Almost even. Uh, oh, Doctor Sheila, I read in the chat uh, that I, I I'd like to continue and pick up from the issue of uh, transfer. Because may tanong na matatanggap po ba yung galing sa DSWD? Uh, uh, I'd like to pick so, up on that. Okay, and yes. Um, let me read that. Um, from Esther Aldal Aldana, the transfer of funds to N NCSC might not be feasible with the D DBM since their mandate is more on policy making, not an implementing agency. Well, you have to uh, clarify this, sir. Yeah. Um, let's first start with Natatanggap mo ba yung galing sa DSWD? DSWD, the, yeah. The, the position of NCSC is very... Yung uh, mga staff, yeah. Relative yeah. to the transfer of the SOCPEN program of DSWD yeah. to NCSC, will NCSC be absorbing the 55 plantilla staff of the SOCPEN and the eight, 854 um, COS, um, MOA employees? The answer to both is really yes. Okay? Uh, Except that, of course, uh, in the transfer, we have to consider uh, all the civil service, DBM, etc. rulings. But uh, the answer is yes for the 55. And the answer is yes for the 800 because we need people who are trained already. Hey, itong 800 plus na, na may training. It, can you just tell them na, uh, okay, oh, they they're, they're, they're so trained and it takes much funds to, 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 to train them once again. So actually the position of the NCSC, tanggapin sila lahat. And of course, wala tayong worry doon sa 860. Alam niyo bakit? Kasama yan sa operational funds na 2% sa 23 billion. So automatic na yan, kasama na yan. Yung issue ng 55, naku po, pag ibinigay niyo sa amin, we will accept details initially, okay na, <laughs> because they are regular employees even as they are detailed. Uh, oh, more importantly, pag, uh, of course, we, we have to follow the system of transfers, di ba? Dadaan pa rin yan sa selection process, etc. So the answer is yes to both. Now, uh, on the issue of, uh, again, yung, yung tanong, uh, yung pera ba? Uh, okay. Uh, wait, sir. Um, okay, the transfer of funds to NCSC might not be feasible with the DBM since their mandate is more on policy making, not on implementing actions. Uh, I'm sorry to tell you that uh, if you read the law, 11350, not only are we policy making, we have visitorial rights because we need to protect the rights of the senior citizens and promote the rights of the senior citizens and make them even more productive and more healthy. Mm -hmm. So, hindi lang po policy making tayo. Dapat gumawa ng parahan. Even as we are, are small in number, like what Dennis is saying, then we need to rely on partnerships. Uh, mm -hmm. The FISCAP, the COSE, and everyone, the local governments. We really have to do everything, fight tooth and nail to protect the senior citizen. Yung transfer, of course, uh, Ang budget ngayon na sinabi natin ay subsidy is with DSWD. But mm -hmm. there is a GAA provision which states that once transferred, uh, DSWD may allow us to also uh, 
operate. In other words, hindi na po problema yung pag-transfer. Except that internally, DSWD and NCSC, we have to say mutually that they are prepared for the transfer. Uh, absent one, you know, will be a question of, ano ba talaga? Prepared ba kayo? Hindi. But to us, uh, we are really in the process of, uh, you know, strengthening our, our you know, needs. Kaya kung kailangan talagang gagawin namin. The DBM has approved only eight regions for us. Instead of the 18 regions, there are eight regions. In other words, uh, we are clustering the regions. But then again, uh, like what you're saying, if if we get the support of all the LGUs, we get the support of all the uh, private sectors, hindi po mahira para sa amin. So uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Attorney Frank. Okay, um, there's a question from um, Aura Sevilla. Uh, and I, uh, Toots, I think this is for you. Do you think it will be more operationally efficient and effective to simplify the criteria such as targeting seniors not, ha not receiving SSS or GSIS or what we call pension testing scheme as implemented in Thailand? Yeah, the um, problem is SSS is not even sharing their database, so it's that simple. Okay. <laughs> so, so I, you know, as I keep saying, if all government is sharing data with each other, fine, mm -hmm. there will be ways of handling it. But SSS is not sharing, and they claim it they're not sharing with the SWD because of data privacy. So it will not work unless the institutions are going to share. It's just mm -hmm. not going to work. So that's why I am already saying because the SWD has their list of Hanan, then use it. <laughs> the, he said, mm -hmm. doesn't it make sense that if you have something there within the department, use it. But right now, the, the list of Hanan database is divorced from the SOC pen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Toots. Um, another, uh, there's a follow-up question from, from the same person from Aura. And again, this is about the, uh, uh, that contentious issue on, uh, differentiating the, uh, the pension amount based on income. How can this be operationalized? She I asked, said, one, that's, what that's will... the way to operationalize use listahanan because listahanan has proxy incomes. When you compare with the, uh, the, the poverty lines and the, the food poverty lines, then automatically you know who will be given. The only question is, are all the seniors in listahanan? Well, that's listahanan. another question. If they're not there, then you can always try to find a way of getting information and then finding their proxy means income. Yeah, that's the easiest way to operationalize. You know, so everything is already there. You already have a huge database, but you're not using it. Mm -hmm. That's my whole okay. point. <laughs> yes, thank you, Toots. Perhaps uh, some of our uh, webinar participants are not just uh, uh, very knowledgeable about how it is being done. You know, the, the use of the um, proxy means test uh, uh, in the listehanan. So thank you. Thank you very much for um, elucidating or, or explaining to us. Uh, how it, how it's uh, operationalized okay um let's go to another oh uh, let me just read one of the comments uh in our chat box and this one is from Milagros Makiling and this uh, is really aligned with what uh Miss Laxa said and um and um uh director Deloria on on uh, thinking beyond pension but really you know um thinking of you know, a comprehensive package of support for our uh, senior citizens. And this was also underscored by um, Dennis and uh, Attorney Frank. Okay. Milagro said, senior citizens with disabilities have this so-called disability cost, like their need of different assistive devices, the need of accessible transport when they travel specifically, uh, the wheelchair users, as well as their need of personal assistance aside from their medical maintenance. That's the importance of putting them at lowest desire. 500 pesos uh, per month is never really enough. Okay, thank you very much for your insight, uh, Ms. Mil Ms. Milagros Makiling. Okay, um, another question. Uh, we are down to our final uh, two questions from uh, Ms. Uh, Maria Lourdes Mendoza. The C CBMS law is expected to replace the listahanan and identifying and targeting the poor. 
uh, how can it help increase the number of deserving pensioners among indigent senior citizens? Is it really the case this CBMS uh, replacing the list uh, Could you um, clarify this, uh, Toots? Yeah, uh, by law, uh, as far as I understand from DSWD, they will no longer have a listahanan. The last okay. listahanan that they did prior to COVID in 2019, that's it. So they have had three listahanan so far, but they will not have anyone anymore because there is a CBMS that replaces effectively listahanan. Now, when you have the CBMS, I, I don't know to what extent, you know, it all depends on what, what the instrument will be that that the PSA is implementing because the original CBMS was very long, <laughs> extremely long that you will have a lot of information on income and so many things. So again, in theory, you, you have actual income data in, in the mm -hmm. CBMS if it's the old CBMS. But if it's a, it's a revised instrument, again, in theory, you could be able to, to model, you could be able to have a proxy means income. You know, if you have a lot of poverty correlates there, you can guess people's income. That's what a proxy means income model is. You're guessing people's income. And that, and when you compare with the poverty line, then you have a way of finding out who is poor, who is, you know, whatever part of the income distribution. Remember, I, div I devised uh, seven tiers of income classes, you know, uh, 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 you know, the very poor, uh, you know, the low income, but not poor, et cetera, et cetera. So even all the way up to the rich, I, 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 div I, di I suggested a, this, this income classification tier before. So it could be done if you have income or a proxy means income. So, okay. the, uh, so it, now the other thing too is, that's why I was saying it will all depend on making sure that this is in, uh, interoperable because if the LGOs are the ones going to implement this, suppose you have a senior somewhere and he decides to transfer to another LGO. Will that LGO share the information with the other LGO? You know, those are the kinds of things we need to prepare because right now nobody, I mean, few people want to share data because they're always afraid of the, the data privacy law when actually that is not a barrier. That is just to be ensure that there is accountability in case some people will do harm to people. No? So that's why, you know, it, it does it that it does not prevent people from sharing private data about me. If uh, it, it can help me, <laughs> but if it is used against me, then I can hold someone accountable. That's the whole point about data privacy law, which many people cannot understand. It's not about making sure that everything is secret. No, there's no such thing as top secret. <laughs> you know. Okay. Thank you very much, Toots. Um, and we have... Uh... Let this be our final question. And uh, a while ago, Dennis um, has this um, question for all of you. And it, this is about how to prevent social tension from being politicized. Well, we have already identified some measures like, you know, improving the targeting, et cetera, et cetera. But perhaps we can, um, you know, spend a, a few uh, minutes on this, uh, starting with the doc. Or with um, attorney attorney Tejano, and perhaps I can also call Jen Jen Monhe, who has been uh, part of, of, of the uh, this project with uh, Dr. Albert. Um, may I call Jen first? Jen, are you still there? Yes, ma'am. Yes. 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 Hi. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, hi. Good too. afternoon to everyone. Yeah, you were wow. you were the ones who did the uh, you were the one who did the the KIIs, no? The key informant interviews yes, in the FGDs. So you may want to share your experience in the field, what you have what uh, you have uh, found, you know, with your interviews and you know with this question of Dennis and how can we uh, uh, prevent uh, the program from being politicized. Um yeah, I think ma'am hindi talaga natin mawawala maitatanggal yon ano yung idea na na popolitika talaga and we've actually seen that on the ground but um i think strict monitoring is going to be one of those um, um means by which we can ensure na hindi siya hindi magiging perverse yung mga results no and and this is also going off of what dr toots has so excellently Describe no yung yung targeting, uh, yung mga errors. Uh, malaki kasing porsyente din um, um, inclusion error eh. So kung ma-address yun, I think the funds will be better um, 
used and, and maximized. Um, so basically monitoring and and more training on the ground because I we also noted that the ones who actually are, are on the field are not social workers. Mm -hmm. And so they may not have the, the kind of training that social workers get from the DSWD. So yung mga application processes na di devolve siya sa mga uh, daycare workers who might not be maybe fully equipped, ma'am. And um, doon yung party na nakita namin nakakoncentrate yung politicization na sinasabi. I see. So okay, ma'am, okay. oo. So kapag ka na-tighten yung air, yung... yung um area done area. i think it will help with uh with the targeting and with the ex inclusion errors thank you ma'am mm -hmm. ma'am ma correct me if i'm wrong in the presentation ni dr albright which uh both of you crafted no you said that the targeting system since 2014 is handled by the osca is that correct um, or the city and municipal or municipal welfare development social welfare development officer Lahat-lahat po yan, ma'am, nag, nag, nagtutulong-tulong, no, mula sa, mula sa central, sa, sa regional, uh, sa OSCA, sa baba, pati hanggang sa barangay levels, ma'am, no, nag, nagtutulungan. Kaya lang, um, yung sinasabi ko, ma'am, yung application process din, yun ang sinasabi kong uh, sana may strict monitoring. Strict monitoring, uh, okay. Yes, yes, ma'am, and uh, para ma, uh, they can really ensure that the ones who are onboarded, really need the support of the government. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. For sure, Attorney Kahan is listening, listening to you intently because uh, they will be inheriting a big problem with the, with the SOC pen. Attorney, no, uh, recommendations on how to prevent the SOC pen from being politicized. Uh, okay. You may have uh, additional insights po, uh, in addition to those already mentioned by our speakers. We are all cooperators here. We have been supporting each other, voicing our sentiments and our uh, our uh, findings. And I don't think uh, Dr. Albert will object if I will copy and paste what he's saying. Tama ba, Dr. Tots? In other words, yung issue ng interoperability, yung issue ng, you know, we are one government, can also be optimized. In fact, Etong uh, Mandana's ruling can be a good vehicle to define interoperability between the national government and the local government. Uh, Dr. Albert is saying that uh, yung LGU pagka yung data nila hindi nila isi share. That is because wala eh, hindi natin pinag-usapan yung interoperability. But if we can only, you know, sa one trillion po yan yung nasa ano? Nasa national government, maybe the guys say LGU. But if all the LGUs and all the national government agencies will realize that there are very critical data that must be shared because you know it it over arches from the local to the national, then you have funds that will be focused on the whole of government. And to me, database is very important so right. i'm practically actually begging dr albert help us with database building but uh, but then again i know that your answer to me would be eh hindi nga tayo nagko cooperate si ganitong insurance system is not cooperating so again i think this will need another another uh, webinar and dialogue because to me it is important that we support each other, cooperate, and share very important uh, data. Otherwise, alamo, Dr. She, the the reason from some senior citizens, the reason why we were organized as a commission is because napo politicized, and so I hope. We will not fail you. Baka maging na politicizing kami dahil yung database namin ay hindi tama. So we are saying we want to start with the right foot. I mean the correct step. So sana po magkatulungan tayo and then perhaps think about how scarce resources of government can be shared in terms of 
interoperability. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Attorney Frank. Okay, uh, Ms. Laksa, would you have anything to say um, on this topic, ma'am? Actually, I agree with all of them. <laughs> Siguro, ano ma'am, just to make this light. Sabi nga ni Billy Joel, honesty. Diba? Let's, uh, let, let's just be honest, diba? Declare kung anong meron po talaga tayo. If we have the pension, then say it. I, alam naman po natin, even the SSS pensioner, the GSIS pensioner, is not enough. Yung mga pension na, na, na receive po nila. But then again, social pension is not just the program that we have. Marami pa po tayong programa dyan that... Uh, the others could avail of. Yun lang po. Maraming salamat, Ms. Laksa. Okay. Um, time check. Uh, we are a bit uh, overtime na tayo. So at this point, may I ask uh, each speaker for their brief final remarks to, to cap this discussion. Let me start. Okay. Uh, can we start uh, uh, with uh, Dr. Albert Toots? Yeah. Uh, brief final remarks. Yeah, just just very briefly. I mean, the, the thing is, of course, we were talking about SOCPEN, but I think we should think of the larger context here, which is try how do we help how do we help senior citizens? I have a brother who is a senior citizen, and you know he's very able-bodied. He wants to to actually um, uh, be a grab rider or whatever, you know. <laughs> but unfortunately. Uh, the requirements are, you know, there are age requirements. So there's discrimination just because he's a senior. These are the things that I think uh, the, 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 the new commission will have to think about because there, the, how, do you, how do you prevent uh, people and, for, and establishments uh, from actually discriminating the seniors? Uh, from, from, uh, because, you know, you have different levels now that you know we're we're aging slowly slowly but surely we're aging uh we're still a young population but we're aging we're heading there so if if that's the case uh, we need to be able to support our seniors thank you thank you very much um attorney uh chair frank Ihano, sir we finally yeah, thank, thank you very much dr sheila cr uh I look at Dr. Albert as a very promising and aspiring senior citizen. <laughs> and uh, like what I told you, NCSC, together with all, all of you, whose heart are for the senior, really would hope that we'd be able to influence policy. Even the GSIS, SSS retirement law, is very rigid. Hindi na ho kayo makakapagtrabaho pagka retire na kayo kasi pagka nagtrabaho kayo baka kaltasan yung retirement nyo. All this will have to change in, if only to give meaning to the lives of the senior citizen. In the past, senior citizens had so much in attention. You have Lola Basyang and all. But right now, if you don't give attention to the senior citizen, even the fragmentation of this society will come easy. Dr. Albert, uh, Dr. Orbeta, everyone, thank you very much for your support and God bless you all. Maraming salamat din po, sir, Chair uh, Franklin Quijano. Okay, uh, before I move to um, our uh, representative from the DSWD, let me call Dennis, uh, Dennis first. Dennis, of the Coalition of... Uh, Services of the elderly or cause. Ayan po. So thank you so much po for this opportunity to to speak up no in behalf of cause and uh yun. So sa cause naman lagi is yung aming stand is that for the welfare no no ating mga nakatatanda because they have been existent for more than sixty years of their lives. So it's it's quite an honor or it's 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 really need to 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 uh, uh, recognize their contribution by by providing their rights and ensuring that they they have the the access to social justice no so i recognize yung mention po ni dr albert dun sa stand po niya with regards to to the universal social pension but i think also we uh, before i leave siguro po i uh, iiwan ko isang palaisipan lang po ito no so uh, with regards to the the differentiation of categorization of beneficiaries, is it mean that 
uh, every year from now and then, a senior citizen can uh, can receive 500 pesos. Then and the next year could receive uh, 750. And the other year is pwedeng maging 500 siya ulit kasi mayroong improvement sa life niya. So, yun. And at the same time, as we could also explore doon sa, yun, more be, uh, explore on the possibility of universal social pension because for us, it doesn't mean that everyone will be given, but we can uh, do it gradually, no? So, we can, we can uh, serve more older persons na hindi po masyadong hirap din na ipatunay yung sarili nila to receive as uh, per, uh, receive uh, assistance from the government. So, yun lang po and maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. Maraming salamat din, Dennis, the Sacramento of Cose and of course, uh, from BSWD, Ms. Mir Miramel Laksa of the Program Management Bureau of BSWD. Ms. Laksa, Miramel Yes, Ma'am Sheila, of course, sabi nga ni Director Maricel, maraming maraming salamat sa PIDS, ano po, dito po sa naging resulta ng inyong pag-aaral kasi moving forward, ito ang isa sa magiging reference namin, ano po, uh, as well as it, part of the transition sa NCSC, dun sa mga programa pa at kung ano pa ang pwedeng improve natin sa ating social pension program. Pero on the lighter note, sabi nga natin, we should not only see uh, we should not only look at our senior citizens na kinakaawaan natin. We should look up to them. They are persons with wisdom na pwedeng ma-share, maibigay, maibahagi sa bawat isa sa atin na matututunan po natin. And therefore, we call on their family na talagang um, pakamahalin po natin sila, ingatan po natin sila hanggat maaari ay ibigay yung kanilang pangangailangan, hindi man sobra-sobra, uh, yung tamang-tama lang, sapat lang, ano po. Uh, kasi nga uh, nakakalungkot kasi may mga datas din po tayo na mga cases ng abuse to our senior citizens so in a way yung centenarian program malaking bagay kasi pinapahalaga nila para makarating ng edad na 100 years old ano po uh, pero yun nga po talagang uh, ingatan at mahalin po natin ang ating mga senior citizens maraming salamat po maraming salamat din uh, Miss Laksa and uh before we close, let me read um, the um, sir. Okay, let me hmm. read uh, what uh, Director Padilla Antolin uh, of the Program Management Bureau um, what she wrote uh, PIDS, uh, particularly Dr. Aniceto Arbeta, regarding um, the, the study of uh, Dr. Albert and his team. He, she said, moving forward, the recommendations are well taken with regards to the DSWD's initiatives to improve the Sockman program. Said recommendations shall be significantly considered in our future policy review, program enhancement, and or development, as well as in lobbying for amendment of existing laws and eventual transfer of the program for older persons from the DSWD to the National Commission of Senior Citizens, or the NCSC. Thank you very much, uh, Director uh, Padilla Antulin. Okay, so friends, at this point, please join me in thanking our paper authors led by Dr. Uh, Toots Albert, and of course, our panel of reactors, Assistant uh, Bureau Director Maricel Deloria of the DSWD, and Ms. Maricel Miramel Laksa, Okay, I call you Maricel Laksa because uh, the name is very <laughs> masyadong malapit dun sa uh, actress na Maricel Laksa. Okay, Attorney Franklin Quijano, Chairperson and Chief Executive Officer of the National Commission of Senior Citizens and Mr. Dennis Destacamento, Project Coordinator of the Coalition of the C Services of the Elderly or COSE. And thank you also to uh, Ms. Jen Monhe, our consultant in this project. For gracing our uh, open forum. Maraming salamat po. Let us give all of them a big virtual clap. Okay, so um, I would like to announce the winners of our opinion uh, poll. Okay, so okay, from WebEx, we have Arvin Joseph Nashon and Charmaine Yusonko. From uh, Facebook, uh, uh, Ma'am Erlene Dacapones and Joshua Godoy. Okay, I repeat, Arvin Joseph Nashon, Charmaine Yusonko. 
uh, Ms. Erlinda Capones and uh, Mr. Joshua Godoy. So thank you very much for participating in our opinion poll. Our webinar team will get in touch with you for your prize. Okay. So, uh, and finally, we have uh, some reminders. So you can access all the presentations from today's webinar from the PIDS website, including uh, the full study of uh, Dr. Albert and uh, uh, Ms. Jennifer Monhe and Ms. Mika Munoz. So please answer the feedback survey that will pop on your screen after this webinar. We will also email you the link after, uh, after uh, the event. Your comments are important to us uh, to improve our uh, virtual uh, events. Also, please regularly visit our website and social media pages. And a big thank you to all who uh, watch the uh, live stream of this event on our Facebook page and those who tune in to our um, uh, Twitter account for the live tweets of this public webinar. Okay, and for our um, last uh, webinar this uh, February, we are inviting all of you next week, uh, Thursday, for our webinar on the FinTech landscape in the Philippines challenges and opportunities. The main speaker, uh, the presenter will be uh, Dr. Uh, Francis Kimba, um, another senior research fellow at PIDS. Okay, and finally, we would like to acknowledge the various organizations from the government, academe, civil society, business, and, inter and international development community who join us today. So friends, uh, this concludes our webinar for today. Stay safe, stay healthy, and um, stay informed too. Thank you and enjoy the rest of your day. See you next week. Maraming salamat po.